You know we got to end it with Joe Montana and that touchdown to win the Super Bowl with that intro right there. You know what's up, Mike. All right, baby. Ooh, what a panel we got today. We are live. We're back in action, attacking your radio with the people you know. This is the third, oh, excuse me, eight the third and three. It's the Power 32 podcast. Man, too many going on. <laughs> but we got great NFL lines joining us today as we're going to go around the league and focus a lot on the AFC South because my guests know all about that. And speaking of my guests, man, like I said, this panel is kick ass right now. First, we got host and producer of Touring the AFC South podcast. He's also a freelance writer and member of the National Association of Black Journalists, Mr. Mike Patton, the general. What's popping, baby? What's going on, everybody? Good to see you, man. Glad you can join us. Beautiful thing. He's a busy man, but he made time for us. He made time. And of course, we got the host of Drop Balls podcast where he covers the NFL, NBA, and boxing. Yes, boxing, keeping it alive. I'm a big-time Colts fan from the AFC side. What up, Chris? What's up, y'all, man? Glad we're in. I love it. I love it. Oh, man, it's going to get crazy in here when we talk AFC South. People are going to start yelling, but we'll try to keep it cool. We'll try to keep it cool with another one of our amazing guests, podcast host and producer at LBR Media. He covers the Memphis Grizzlies and Tennessee Titans, as you may be able to tell by looking at him on screen right now, Mr. Paris Shark, what's good, man? Hey, what's going on here, everybody? Thanks for the invite. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had to have this. When I put out this panel, people were like, damn, nice panel. I'm like, these are the people. I'm like, this is how we do it. Getting ready to go. All right. Hey, my name is Jason Fearman, a.k.a. The Sports Prophet, and today's show is presented by Third and Three and brought to you by Reeboks, a Reeboks deal of the week. Get Reebok Rewind run shoes for just $39.99. That's cheaper than most gas prices, guys. Go get them shoes with the code rewind at checkout. That's all you got to do. Go to third and three podcast.com. Use the code rewind. Let us hook you up and get that discount, baby. That's what it's all about. All right. Discount double check Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes. All right. Forget about that. Let's go to neighborhood news. It's time to get this thing going. Let's not waste any time, fellas. First things first is that it is official and we knew it was going to be Chris that Baker Mayfield is now the starting quarterback for the Carolina Panthers. And to me, I'm not shocked because why the hell else did they bring him in there? So there you go. And maybe that makes DJ Moore a better fantasy wide receiver. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know, man. I <laughs> y'all know how I feel about Baker, bro. Like y'all, y'all know how I feel about Baker Mayfield. Um, maybe with this team, I mean, he has something to prove, right? Like this is a contract year for him because they took on his uh, well, who was it? The Browns took on his his uh his extension or whatever, or not his extension, but you know, y'all know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, they took a large the words yeah. out right now. They got the large but, part of uh, his contract. Yeah, they're paying a yeah, large yeah. part of the contract. Carolina's only so got to pay like four this is a contract. So. Yeah, this is a contract year for him. So he he has a lot to prove. First game is against his former team, the Cleveland Browns. So maybe he goes – you know how he plays when he has a chip on his shoulder? Like when he has that chip, he goes out there and he plays like a man with his hair on fire. So we'll, we'll see what happens this season. Maybe he's Carolina's long-term option. Uh, we saw Sam Darnold. We know what he is. Um, and then hmm. Matt Corral, he he had that Liz Frank injury. So there's no hope for him playing this season. So it, it's it's on Baker unless they go get Jimmy Garoppolo from y'all. Oh, oh, geez. For Carolina Panthers fans, I hope not. <laughs> anyway, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. You, you don't want to mess up your season any more than it's got going on right now. Just pray that you keep Christian McCaffrey healthy and see if you could do something. But – I don't know. Look, hey, but bottom line is, is that we've seen both of these guys play. They came out of the same draft, and I'm talking about Darnold and uh, Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield is the better quarterback out of the both of them. It's really not saying a whole lot. But, Parrish, I got Baker probably ranked around 18 to 20th best in the league because we haven't seen enough from these young kids yet. So, I mean, look, the guy can play, but I don't expect him to turn Carolina into a playoff team necessarily. No, not at all. Um, we just did our predictions on LBR a couple of weeks ago. I had Carolina going about 89. Maybe we could sneak over and get 98. I think he makes them pretty decent. Uh, but we all depend on Christian McCaffrey finally staying healthy, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you – I mean, look, without Christian McCaffrey, stay, stay, McCaffrey staying healthy, Mike, they don't really have much of a shot. We saw them. They started out 3-0 with Sam Darnold last year. And we're like, oh, Carolina, look at this. What's going on? 
Look, now you got Baker back there. He brings more. He's more athletic, obviously. But, yeah, without CMC, they are not going to have much offense going on at all because their defense is nothing to write home about. Well, I will say this. Uh, while we're talking about their defense, uh, you know, and all those different things, I mean, you, you got you kind of forget that they have one of the most underrated wide receivers in the NFL, Mr. DJ Moore. Nobody talks great. about him, but he does great things. And I think – he could be a guy that's still, you know, he's still going to get his thousand yards. I, mean, I don't care who the quarterback is. He's still going to get his thousand yards. The pending thing is, is can Robbie Anderson step up and who is going to be the tight end for this team? Because nobody knows who he is. You couldn't pick him out in the lineup. That's just. <laughs> <laughs> but also, we got to you got to remember too. They did get one of one uh, Higgins from from the Browns as well. Um, I I actually like the defense, especially with with J C Horn. <laughs> Back, I actually like their defense. I think their defense is hella underrated. Um, you got JC Horn back, you got the safety. I forget his name, but he was uh I think last year was his sophomore season, but he's nice as well. So I I think their defense is coming together. Um, but I like you said, Jason, with Christian McCaffrey, you gotta make sure he stays healthy. And if the defense can can do what I believe they can do, then they might be a nice team this year. Well, you see, that is the thing. The defense is interesting. And you mentioned J.C. Horn, and they're expecting a lot out of this kid now. They think that he's going to be, you know, a hell of a player in the secondary. Um, they're in a division where, again, New Orleans and, you know, Tampa Bay are still, you know, the cream of the crop. Tampa uh, kept the Falcons. They don't have to worry about it at all. But the NFC being as weak as it is, I guess they could be on the cusp of being a playoff team. It is possible because we only have, I mean, let's say, look, the Rams, Green Bay probably going to win their division. Uh, Philly's most likely going to win theirs. Again, that could be debatable. But then you got Tampa, New Orleans, San Francisco's in there. Is Minnesota going to get better? But, you know, you mentioned some of the guys on the defense, like Shaq Thompson is out there. Um, let me see. Let me actually bring this up. Like Jeremy Chin, as a matter of fact, he's another one um, who they got in a trade. That's the, uh, yeah, that's the same thing I was talking about. Brian Burns. Yeah. Right. Bur that's another one. Burns. Yeah, there Brian you go. Burns. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he can make some plays on the on the D line. So, I mean, look, it's it's not out of the realm of possibility that that they can make things happen. But yeah, now it's on Baker to do it, and again, CMC to stay healthy. So, how long will that happen? I don't know, man. That's up in the air. But we got time to check it out. It's coming up in about what three weeks? Oh my God, I can't wait. Me and uh, Damian and Nikki actually. Me, Damian and Nikki are calling the uh, the first game. Um, <laughs> the Bills and the Rams. We're going to call the game, and it's going to be completely R-rated. It's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. I don't know how it's going to work out, but we'll, we'll put on our best Joe Madden and Pat Summerall impression, I guess. We'll do what we could do. Um, so you yeah, guys Chris. brought up Jimmy. Yeah. Sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt, right, but right. Chris, do you know um, about how many uh, cuss words are we going to put an over-under on? <laughs> yeah, so we take it. We take it bets. Yeah, we take it bets. We're gonna do the over under on like fifteen. We're gonna do the over under on fifteen. We're gonna open. The, we're gonna open it up at that. The I drop ball sports quarter. book. Drop ball <laughs> sports <laughs> book. Right, give, me the, give me the over. Over under fifteen by quarter. Forget the whole game, man. Shoot, forget that. <laughs> <laughs> Profits are going to be coming out by the minute. Forget about it. Oh, man. All right. Well, I can think of a few four-letter words for this next guy, Jimmy G, where you did bring up. I mean, he obviously ain't going to Carolina. There was talk about him going to Cleveland. To me, that doesn't make sense. I want to hear what you guys got to think because he will not be a 49er one way or the other. So whether he gets traded and we get lucky to get a 14th round draft pick for him or we just cut him and he goes somewhere else, where is he going to go other than – Seattle. I don't see any other team that really needs a quarterback, and that team desperately needs one. So, I, I, Parrish, I'll start with you. What the hell is going to happen with Jimmy G? I have no idea. I don't even think Seattle makes <laughs> sense. Because, I mean, Seattle ain't going nowhere, so why would they bring Jimmy G in? Like, it don't really make sense even for them. So, really, I guess Cleveland, <laughs> since Deshaun Watson's contract is only $1 million this year, so they could hypothetically fit in Jimmy G's contract, but um, I really can't think of any team that Literally needs his services at this point. No, nah, I mean, look, you're right. Listen, they can afford him. The question is, Mike, do they want to afford him? Cleveland? I don't think so. Look, but Jacoby, Jacoby Brissett can do everything that Jimmy Garoppolo can do, and that's really not saying a whole lot. And Brissett, to me, is probably even a little bit better. Garoppolo, as we know, had benefited from being on a great team with the Niners. So where he goes, I don't know. But I will say this. The guy's worthy of having a job in the NFL, just not as a starting quarterback to me, Mike. Right. That you're correct. You're correct. Now, of course, you know, you, you can see him 
in Seattle. You could see him in Cleveland. You could potentially see him in Minnesota if Kirk Cousins goes down. There's another one. That's interesting. interesting. But what I will say is you might just see Jimmy G in the club. That might be where he, he is when he gets cut. So it, it, you might just see him in the club, <laughs> hanging out, like, hey, I used to be out there. You know, he, he could have did this and he could have did that. Or you could see him as an analyst until he gets signed. There's another uh, one. There you go. Uh, yeah, Jimmy yeah, G is or maybe, a, maybe a model on the runway if he tries that, because even his grandmother <laughs> said in subway commercials that all he got is his looks. Thank God he's handsome because he can't do nothing else, damn it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Chris, for the longest time, I mean, look, I, I, it's cool. Jimmy, there are some Jimmy G lovers out there. And all right, fine. He had a great winning percentage. But we all know anybody who watched that. He is not the reason that we got to a Super Bowl and to another NFC championship. He came along for the ride. And had he played better, we probably may have two Super Bowls right now as it is. And that's the whole hope of Trey Lance, that he's going to do that. So no more Jimmy. Trey Lance is in. We're all excited about it. But Again, we don't really care much what happens with Jimmy G right now. You know, let him go wherever it's going to be. But I don't know where he's going to land right now. I mean, is there another team out there that has a quarterback who's, eh, I don't know, that they could use a backup in case something happens? I mean, Mike mentioned Minnesota with Kirk Cousins. That's interesting. I'm trying to think of another one off the top of my head that would so really work out. That's, really that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I was thinking Minnesota because he doesn't – Kurt doesn't really have, I mean, there's not really a backup. You have Shane Mannion, I believe that's his name, and then Kellen Mond. Like, they're right. <laughs> they're not moving the needle. And so with the team that Minnesota <laughs> has, Jimmy G can go there and be somewhat successful with that team because they have they have Jettis, they have uh, Adam Thielen, they have KJ Osborne, they have a, a tight end, and then you have Dalvin Cook. And so if O'Connell, uh, I mean, the thing is, is what – what kind of offense is that going to look like with O'Connell? With O'Connell, I believe they'll be throwing the ball a lot more. So it, it's just a matter of can Jimmy G come in and do that, or does he really have to rely on the run game? Um, mm. I would say maybe the Dolphins, but they have Teddy Bridgewater, so that's probably out of the question at this point. Um, that's a good but, ball, though. That's still interesting. Yeah, and I don't I don't think the Browns really need him after seeing what Hobbs has done um, You know, this, this preseason. Uh, Jacoby Brissett, I mean, I don't like him, but I do think he's better than Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, so I think he can get the job done in Deshaun Watson's absence. So I, the only team I could really see is him backing up in Minnesota, unless, unless, uh, oh boy, for the Jets, unless his, um, Zach Wilson, unless his injury mm. is worse than what they let, they lead on, or like he doesn't come back for a while, then maybe the Jets could go with Jimmy Garoppolo, or maybe they believe in Mike White and Joe Flacco. I don't know. But right. that's another team that I would say look at, too. Yeah, and there was there's actually some chatter about him going to the Jets. That was a possibility of what I did here. But, you know, hopefully for their sake, Zach Wilson will be better. And Joe Flacco, you know, it's his second stint around with them. Another team came to mind um, when we were thinking, yeah, I, honestly, I, I, I don't want to freak you out. But I thought about the Colts for a second. But then I realized I got Nick Foles as their backup. So they're probably all right there. But what about what about Denver? Could, could they go for a backup like that? Mike, what do you think? I know, look, Russell Wilson, he's he's the man, but if, God forbid, he gets hurt, they have another one of those solid teams where just throw the ball five yards down the field. I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a fit for him. Well, actually, it might be a fit for him just because of the running game. You know, yeah. the running game gets going. But, uh, you know, running game and defense kind of sounds a little familiar to the San Francisco 49ers. But, you know, <laughs> it could be. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know if the money works out. But, you know, when – uh, Chris was talking about uh, the, the the Browns. I want to go back to them for a second. Hmm. Dobbs, actually, to me, I think Dobbs should actually be the starter over Jacoby Brissett. Ooh, hot take. And I'm gonna, I'm that, gonna that's say this. Dobbs. I mean, I said Hobbs. Yeah. My bad. My bad. I, mean, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, know, I know from the University of Tennessee, they used to call him right. Rocket Man at, at, yeah. at, at, uh, at Tennessee. Calvin and Hobbs over here. <laughs> but, <laughs> But anyway, uh, when it comes to, to Dobbs, he actually looks more the part of Deshaun Watson than Jacoby Brissett does because he can move around, he can freelance, throw the football, and he does those things smoothly and easily. 
as opposed to Jacoby Brissett. He looks like he's struggling sometimes when he has to take off and run. He's not really a run first guy as much as people want to make him out to be. Mm-hmm. So hey, people that's don't believe why I'm like, me when I talk yeah. about Jacoby Brissett. They don't believe me when I talk about Jacoby Brissett. I've no, seen it no. up close and personal. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think Dobbs is going to get his opportunity uh, with, within these 11 games. I definitely think he is. And that's interesting. That That's a hot take right there. I haven't heard that one yet. I ain't going to lie. I have not heard that one. So that certainly is a possibility. All right. We'll see. Cleveland's got to do something. They got a hell of a team. It'd be a shame if they wasted a year. Uh, that'd be bad. But Brissett's it, 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 it's going to be, man. Brissett's good. You know, he's. I like him. Again, not great, but just try to manage the game. Run the ball, play defense. That's what a lot of teams got to do this year. All right, I want to have a little fun over here because we're going to have a whole lot of fun, obviously, talking about the AFC South. But I want to do a little true-false with you guys, all right? So we're going to go around the bend, true or false, and you can even tell me why if you'd like to. So let's start. Parrish, why don't we start with you, bro? Justin Herbert will lead the league in passing yards this season. True or false? Mm-hmm. i say true. Uh, all right. He's definitely, he's definitely he, i I say true. Uh, he, he's definitely uh, – he got the skill set. He has the talent to be able to pull it off. And – they love to pass the ball because Austin Eckler, they use him almost strictly as a receiver at the backfield. So I can see that. That's a great call. That's a great call. You combine that with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, if he can stay healthy 12 out of 17 games, uh, hell yeah. And they also got this kid, um, Palmer, who has been blowing up Mike lately. So, you know, that, yeah, I, he, he could. What do you think? I'm going to go false, even though I do like the Palmer reference from, of course, University of Tennessee. But anyway. Um, no, baby. <laughs> But uh, I, I don't see him leading the league in passing. Uh, contrary to belief, uh, I still think uh, that guy in Kansas City will be doing that again. Mm. He's got a, he's got more diff- different options. And, you know, MVS being out there, you know, you talk about the deep threat. He's not Tyree Kill, but he does give you that option. Now, that would be interesting. All right, Herbert. Leads the league. What's it? Yeah, I would shoot. He does Hardman. I'm saying, I'm saying. And again, it's freaking Patrick Mahomes. People have to realize that. Tyree Kill is great as he is. Let's not kid ourselves. Patrick Mahomes, if you don't think he's the best quarterback in the league, then you probably think he's second best. To me, he's number one, as, as far as I'm concerned. The guy's unbelievable. Number one, right, Parrish? Yeah, you with me. You with me. What do you think, uh, C. Lou? You think that Justin Herbert leads the league in passing yards this year? True or false? Yeah, I, th- I think he can. Um, I, so I think it's true. So the thing is, what like what Mike was saying, yeah, we know Patrick Mahomes, he's going to do his thing. Mahomes is going to do his thing. And, and Mahomes is going to go crazy just because people have doubted him this this offseason. So I, mm. I could see I could see him doing it, but I also could see Justin Herbert. We got to remember, Justin Herbert was second behind Brady in passing yards last season. Exactly. And not only that, he uh, his receivers, I think, dropped the most passes in the league last season so if those receivers catch the ball maybe justin <laughs> herbert leads it this year so if they have a better year next year then i i definitely can see justin herbert leading the league in, in passing yards good breakdown well said i like that well done by everybody right there I, and there's a lot of candidates also you know even Derek Carr, tom brady they're going to be throwing the ball a lot so that's why it's definitely a legit question it's not just you know, every, people are throwing justin herbert oh mvp of the year well, I, let's see what happens first but the guy is uh, – oh, he's a big boy. All right. Uh, oh, by the way, Patrick Mahomes, did you see that throw he made the other day where he was running left and then threw it – just like flinged it with his, with his wrist to the right side and the thing went 100 miles an hour? You guys see that? He's a, he's a cheater. He's a cheater. <laughs> but, you know, it, he's a, what's he's even funnier what, – what's even funnier is, is that I don't know how many of you caught it, but um, I'm not saying this guy is Patrick Mahomes. Just want to get that out of the way. But – Malik Willis actually throws at those kind of arm angles as well. I've seen a few of those, and I'm like, wow, I didn't know he throw at those type of angles. Three of them. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I saw one, uh, the one against uh, Baltimore, and then he threw mm-hmm. another one against, uh, what was it, against uh, Tampa Bay and this right, past weekend. Two of them. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Like, nice. I was like, dang, I didn't know he had that many arm angles. Yeah. <laughs> you got to love that. You got to love that. He's smart. He's creative. He knows what he's doing. We're going to talk a lot more about him, especially when we get to the Titans. I got a lot of things I want to say about that. All right, let's get to the next one. Um, all right, Chris, why don't you start us off? This is your team over here. This is your guy. Jonathan Taylor will lead the league in rushing touchdowns. True or false? Oh, rushing touchdowns? Touchdowns. Not yards, touchdowns. I could see that happening, yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. going with it. Uh, true. true, yeah. He's going to be getting the ball a lot. What do you think, Mike? 
I'm going to say false. Uh, the reason why I'm going to say false is because, uh, like Chris has mentioned on, on past uh, times, that he may not get as many carries this year. Less carries equals less times to score touchdowns. So I'm going to say false. Hmm, okay. That's an interesting take right there. It's an interesting take. I, I have a guy in mind that probably not a lot of people are thinking about Parrish. I'll say him real quick. I feel like if they get down – you know, within the 10 yard line enough, Denver, they're able to move the ball. I feel like Javante Williams is going to rack up a whole bunch of touchdowns. So, he may have seen Mike, we're right there, baby. We're right there. But I don't know, Parrish, what do you think? Do you think that uh, last year's league leader in rushing yards will lead the league in touchdowns on the ground, too? Uh, can you repeat who again? Oh, Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor. That's tough. <laughs> I didn't want to say Mike. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's tough. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say true. Um, I know he might get less touches, but when he gets the ball, he's dynamic, man. It's it, it'd be hard to stop uh, John Taylor, and he, he stays relatively healthy as well. So I I can see I say true. That's a big thing, and he is young, only going into his third year, so he's got his time within the next you know few years to maybe even bust out two thousand. Let's see if he can pull it off. Uh, Tyree Kill. No, I, don't, I don't want him. I don't want him running. For <laughs> you don't want that. I don't much. want that to happen because <laughs> that means that means he's gonna get a lot of a lot of touches. I don't. I want him to cut down on the touches. No doubt. No I doubt. Want him to cut down on the touches. No. No. Two thousand yards over here. Now we good. <laughs> We're gonna be having a conversation next year. We're gonna be talking, Chris, next year at this time. Are we gonna pay Jonathan Taylor? You know that's what's gonna happen. You all are gonna pay him a whole bunch of money. Oh, yeah, or yeah, not. You know that's gonna happen, man. That's gonna be a big deal, no matter hey, how good. Ballard, Ballard's going to pay him. Ballard, Ballard loves to keep his players at home. As long as he's the GM, I think Ballard uh, pays Jonathan Taylor. And that just depends on how successful we are this year. If we have a down year, I think Ballard's gone. But mm. I, I think Jonathan Taylor. I like that inside action right there. Look, Chris knows his Colts. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. All right, I was mentioning real quick for our next true or false. We got Tyreek Hill on the Miami Dolphins this year. Will he lead the league in receptions? receptions, Mike. I feel like a lot of bubble screens are going to happen, so he can catch a lot of balls. What do you think about that? Uh, no. I, I don't think he'll lead the league in receptions, uh, simply because you have so many guys that can catch the football. And plus, they'll more than likely be a run-focused offense based like the 49ers. So I don't think he'll lead the league in receptions this year. Okay, that makes a hell of a lot of sense. That definitely does. Uh, yeah, he's right, Parrish. There's a lot of guys to throw to also when you talk about Kaseki at tight end and Jalen Waddle and now Cedric Wilson over there. Okay, that, that makes sense. But what do you think, true or false? Yeah, false for the exact same reason. So I instantly right. thought uh, Jalen Waddle, he had, I think he had 100, over 100 receptions last year. So Yeah, yeah. He, like, he broke the rookie record, like 104 or something right. like that. Yeah. Right, so he can spread the opportunity to those two. And I got uh, C.A. Wilson from, uh, you know, I live in Memphis, so he's from uh, the city of Memphis. Wow. So, yeah, he got plenty of options over there. All right, all right. Yeah, you guys changed my mind a little bit. I'm thinking, I'm like, this guy's going to catch like 120 passes this year. But you know what? It makes a lot of sense. Chris, you're on their side. You think false on this one? Yeah, I think I think it's false. The person I actually think going to lead the league in receptions is Justin Jefferson um, mm. with uh, O'Connell because if – if Justin Jefferson gets used a lot like Cooper Cup did last year, um, he's going to have a monster. He's going to have a monster year. I mean, he's already killing it as it is his first two years. So if he gets used like Cooper Cup last year, then I can see him leading the league in receptions. But I don't I don't see it going to um, to Tyree Kill. Like what Mike was saying, I think it's going to be a lot of a lot of it's going to be run centric. Like they'll and I mean, there's too many mouths to feed on that offense. Um, You're right. There's a lot of miles to feed on that offense. So I can't see just one person um, dominating the receptions like that. So, yeah. They see, this is why I have these guys on right here so they can tell you what the hell is going on. They understand football. This is what I'm talking about. I love it. All right. Let's go to another wide receiver. Devontae Adams will have at least 12 touchdowns this season. Chris, let's start with you, bro. Yeah, I mean, I could see that. Um, I, I could see Devontae Adams having – so I, I'm going to say true, having yeah. 12 touchdowns this season. Um, once again, it's a team with a lot of miles to feed, but as a red zone target, I think I think we'll see that. We'll see that with uh, Devontae Adams. I agree for all those reasons and also for the fact that, you know, they brought him over, they paid him a lot of money, and he wants the ball, and he's got Derek Carr going on with him. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. What do you think, Mike? 
I'm kind of torn on this one, to be honest. Uh, you know, I kind of was like, yeah, I wanted to say he's going to do it, but then I couldn't think about Waller, and Renfro, running game. And then, of course, the, the ultimate equalizer is Josh McDaniels, who sometimes thinks his way out of throwing it to the best option. Mm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to say false on this one. I'm going to say All right. False. All right, all right. Going with the field. Uh, well, not the field, actually. Devontae Adams had 12 touchdowns. Um, maybe it's a push. Who knows, Parrish? What do you think, true or false, he gets at least 12 touchdowns? I say true. Um, you know, him and Derek Carr already have their repertoire from college. So I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure he's going to be trying to get his board of aisle as, as many times as possible. So I say yeah. true. All right. This next one's a guy that I am extremely high on. He is absolutely fantastic. I love watching him play. If I had to pay a ticket – for anybody, it'd probably be him, and that's Lamar Jackson. The question is, is he going to run for 1,000 yards this season? So, true or false, he runs for 1,000 yards, Parrish, Lamar Jackson. We know he can do it, obviously. Ah, <laughs> uh, true. I got to say true. I don't I, – I guess Rashad Bateman, I can't really name the receiver they have, so he's going to have on track for 1,000 yards if you stay healthy, so. <laughs> True. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I mean, yeah, they, they, look, they got Bateman, they got Mark Andrews, and they traded away Marquise Brown. But um, look, if their running back core comes back healthy, and especially J.K. Dobbins, Mike, that could change things around um, as far as Lamar having to run the ball so much. So I don't know. What do you think, true or false? A thousand yards. I'm going to say false. Uh, and I'm hoping false for the, for the sense of hopefully Greg Roman invents a few things as an offensive coordinator. Sorry, my blood pressure is a little rising because I've seen this in uh, <laughs> Buffalo and I've seen this in San Francisco for now. Yes, so we have. please, for the love of God, please <laughs> invent something new for your offense. We have seen you underdeveloped quarterbacks over and over and over again. It started with Kaepernick, and it kept mm. on going on from there. I don't want to see this happen to Lamar Jackson. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna take a moment to say I'm gonna start the campaign to fire Greg Roman already. I'll start Ooh. it already. This year. Ooh. Ooh. Mike is ready to roll. He's like, get him out of here. Let's go. Let's get this kid solved. Also, that's another damn thing. Nice breakdown, Mike. I like it. Ah, Chris, I leave it to you. Thousand yards. Sure. Uh, so y'all see the little Ravens placard back here. My son yeah, loves yeah. Lamar Jackson. I had to buy that for him. Um, I'm going to say false. I don't think Lamar runs for 1,000 yards this year. I think he surprises a lot of people this year. Um, and it's it's not because of Greg Roman being innovative in the passing game or anything like that. But uh, people sleep on the weapons that, I, that, that Lamar has. Lamar. Um, yeah, he has Rashad Bateman. You add Mark Andrews, then you add Isaiah Likely, who I feel like they're going to use him in a lot of different ways, not just at the at the tight end position. I think he'll line up towards the outside. He'll be used kind of like Jimmy Graham was back with the with the Saints. He's not a he's not an inline tight end where he's going to be blocking and stuff like that, run blocking. He's going to be catching passes, and whether that's from the tight end position or from from the X or you know whatever position at the wide receiver spot. Um, I, I think that's how he's going to be utilized. Then you add uh, Proche and Devin Duvernay. However they feel about those two dudes in, at the receiver position. Um, and then they just picked up Demarcus Robinson. Now, he's not that great, but he does stretch the field because he has speed. So um, it's I, I think he surprises a lot of people. One thing we know about Lamar Jackson is that every season he comes in improved. Like he improves something during the offseason. Now the only the only knock is we got to see you do it consistently because we'll see it for like the first few games like we'll see his his throwing mechanics change his base change uh, you know and his legs and everything we see we see that happen and then he kind of reverts back and so um, it's just a matter on will you keep that change consistent so I and I, I'm hoping he will because this is a contract gift from like he's he's looking to get the bag so. I think he's going to shock a lot of people this season, and he's going to shut a lot of people up. He's going to shut a lot of people up this season. Well done. Well done, Chris. I mean, this is a, a lot of the things that you're mentioning and one of the reasons why he's my front runner for the MVP right now. And you also mentioned Duvernay, who I like right there. He's going to play more of an intricate role on, in that offense this year, too. That's pretty good. All right, we're going to get some AFC South action, but I got a couple of more for you guys over here. Uh, the Green Bay Packers, they lost Devontae Adams. So true or false? Uh, Mike, let's go to you. True or false, Green Bay Packers will win 13 games. 
They have for I what three years in a row now. They're not going to win 13, but they're going to be right there close. And the reason why they're going to be close is going to be three things. The Minnesota Vikings, the Detroit Lions. <laughs> and what's that other team there in that division? <laughs> the Chicago Bears. So because of those three teams, I think they'll they'll at least get 12 wins. Maybe 13 might be stretching it a little bit, but – We'll see what happens with Rodgers and the development of him and the wide receivers. I think the defense will still be solid. That is excellent right there. I love it because the three things that names the three teams. I'm thinking it's going to say the defense is improved. They got A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones, and you still got Aaron Rodgers, but no, he comes out with the other teams. That was great right there. I love Just that. being I love honest. That. I mean, yeah, can, I, can anybody tell me I'm lying? No, no. <laughs> You are definitely not Detroit Lion right now. No, that that's for sure. You you are you are telling the truth, my friend. Damn. Even though I think the Lions probably just take a step up this year, and that's not all hard knocks talking, but they're not going to be some you know crazy world beaters or anything like that. So, oh man, I'm with you. But again, they still have a really solid team. They don't necessarily need to again throw the ball all over the place. Aaron Rodgers is not going to be the MVP this year. I can tell you that much right now, Chris. But um, well, the Packers win 13 games despite having not, not having out uh, Devonte Adams. Uh, so no, nah, I don't. I don't think they're going to win 13 games this year. I think, but see, also with the NFC, I don't think the NFC is that strong this season. So I don't even think 13 games is what it takes to get them where they need to be. Hmm. Um, I still think they're going to be competitive at the wide receiver position. I like Romeo Dobbs a lot. Um, he's been playing crazy in the preseason. Now, granted, is against second and third stringers. He'll see a lot of a lot of different coverages when the real season starts. Right. Um, but he's a baller. And I think uh, Aaron, Rodger, Aaron Rodgers sees that. And one thing I've always said is Green Bay knows how to draft receivers. That's one thing they get right. They can draft receivers. Um, but I think what Green Bay is going to do a lot of is this year, they're going to lean on their defense. I think their defense upgraded. Um and they're going to lean on Aaron Jones in the passing game a lot. We're going to see Aaron Jones utilized a lot in the passing game this year. And then last, just like last year, AJ Dillon led the team in rushing. Mm-hmm. We're going to see a lot, like a lot of that this season. Um, now, thirteen games, maybe not. I honestly have the Vikings winning that division. Um, so oh, we'll see what happens. Interesting. But yeah, thirteen games. I don't. I don't think they win thirteen games this year. Okay. All right. Yo, saying up with us, Asia. So that's that's interesting, right there. That, another hot take, Minnesota. Hey, look, man, y'all know, y'all know, I, I get my hot takes off, man, and sometimes they be hitting, they be that's hitting. Kirk so, Cousins, <laughs> Kirk Cousins. Put, put your put your money on the Vikings this year, man. They, they either hitting or you hitting the drink. Man. <laughs> 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 nah, I'm not hitting no drink or nothing, man. Nah, the I'm you, I, I like I like the Vikings a lot. It you you have an innovative offense this year. Um, now, granted, last year the defense was weak last year, but this year you're going to see a lot more with their offense with O'Connell as their their head coach. Um, just because of the tree that he comes from, he's an offensive coordinator. He's from that. Uh, What's his name? Sean McVay. Uh, you know, the Sean McVay's tree. Um, and I, I think he's more innovative as an offensive mind. And that defense will come along, but I think that offense is going to take a next step. Like I said, Justin Jefferson, if he can play, if he's utilized like Cooper Cup, and if they utilize Dalvin Cook in the passing game as well, it's, it's going to be a problem for that division. That's interesting. There's so many things. Dalvin Cook, he's got to stay healthy. I do like Madison a lot. There's no doubt. But yeah, Cook has got to stay healthy. Thielen's also going to have to stay healthy because he's not getting any younger and he's not getting any bigger. That's for sure. He's still a little man, but he can still play football. Remember, Thielen Thielen still had like 13 or 10 touchdowns last year and only played like half the season. I mean, he still was able to be a red zone threat for the time he was out there. The thing that I was confused, look, kept bringing in Kevin O'Connell, I'm cool with. I kind of figured they would try, look, going from one offensive coordinator to another offensive coordinator job. I thought they would have gone with a different defensive coach because, like you're saying, that's what they need. That's what I'm worried about if I'm a Viking fan. Are we going to be able to stop anybody? With Kevin O'Connell coming in, yeah, I think that they'll be more innovative on offense and use these unbelievable weapons that they have. Justin Jefferson has been incredible. Some of the best, I mean, rookie and sophomore year you've ever seen. But I just uh, I still worry about that defense. I don't want to get too sidetracked. But with see, it, but. Their, their their head coach last year he was a defensive coach, right? Their right. Still look like trash. 
So I right. mean, I think they want to they want to innovate that offense because he wasn't innovative on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, Kirk Cousins put up numbers last year, but I think he could be a lot better with a with a coach that actually can innovate an offense. Mm. And then, like you see, you see a little bit of different things going on. I mean, I think I want to say they drafted heavily defensively this year. They did, um, if I remember correctly, they they did draft a lot on the defensive side of the ball this year. So I mean they they're looking to build up that defense, but because they know they have the pieces on offense already, so it's a matter of it's a matter of bringing the defense along. And I, I think with an innovative offense, it it's a scoring league now. I mean right. it really is. It's a scoring league. Um, if you want to keep and especially like if you want to keep up with the AFC, you got to be able to put up points. So makes a lot of sense. And you know what? I guess you could help out that defense if you're scoring a lot of points on offense. You know they don't have to play from behind all the time. So that's definitely a good point. Definitely a good point. Parrish, uh, bringing it all back in together. You think Green Bay wins that division 13 games? True, false? What do you say? Hey, we have a commandment, let's be real, podcast, that once a team or a player show you who they are, you believe them. They won 13 games, what, last two or three years? I believe yeah, they can win 13, years. and I believe they can lose mm-hmm. their first, and they're going to lose a home playoff game. So <laughs> if you know who they are, they're going to do the same thing. <laughs> yep. Yeah, just re- wash, rinse, repeat. That's how it goes. That's it. That's the same damn thing. Is it going to be against the 49ers, P? P? <laughs> <Right> <laughs> <or something. laughs> yeah, they, we like they boogeyman. <laughs> oh, man. Rip you guys up. That's it. Oh, man. So many years that we played. You can go back to the 94 uh, playoffs back then. Um, playing minutes. Oh, geez. So many games. Great games. All right. A couple more, and then we're going to get to uh, the AFC South over here. Uh, let's see. Got a couple that I want to ask. All right. How about this one? I did mention the Denver Broncos already. Parrish, I'll start with you. The Denver Broncos have a winning season this year, true or false? And that can even mean nine games. Oh, yeah. Give me true. I got the whole division uh, potentially making the playoffs since all four actually can make the playoffs. So true. I get them in these nine games. I think everybody gets a winning record in that division. I like it. I like it. I'm talking. Oh, baby. I'm talking. I, I like the Broncos a lot this year, Mike. I was just saying, was they, they were a quarterback away. Now they got their quarterback. Yes, I know Tim Patrick is down, but I, again, I think they're more of a running defensive team. So, what do you think? You think they make? Uh, you think they have a winning record this year, Denver? Seven and ten last year. I definitely think they have a winning record. Uh, you know, every time I think about this division, the song "Survival of the Fittest" comes in my mind. Every time I think about this division, but it's it's going to be a a knockdown drag out drag out fight pretty much every game. May as well just put it on Sunday night football or Monday night football and call it a day. Yeah. But yeah. you know, I, I I I you know nine wins I can see that happening. But boy oh boy, they're going to have to fight hard to make the playoffs. Very hard. <laughs> You're right. You're right. It's going to be a complete. Ba- it's almost like. Which quarterback is going to fall off or, God forbid, get injured or what key player is going to get hurt? That's like almost the only way that you know somebody's going to finish at the basement of this division, Chris. I, you know, it's it's tough. I mean, still, I'm going through my head. I feel like the Chargers got all the talent, but Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback and Denver maybe has the best defense, but maybe the Raiders have the best weapons. It's all over the place, man. But to me, I still think Denver somehow has a winning season. Will they make the playoffs? I'm not sure yet. So <laughs> I think they have a winning record. I think like uh P Shark said, I think they go like uh hold on my bet. I think they go like nine and eight or something this year. Um I honestly think they finish at the end or last in their division. Uh-huh. Um now the the thing that worries me with their defense is I don't losing Vic Fangio, he's a great defense of mine. He's a great defensive mind, so you're you're kind of changing the defensive scheme, um, and I don't know how that's going to fit for that defense. I don't know how that defense is going to gel, how they're going to mesh. We, <laughs> if it looks anything like it looked against Buffalo the other night in the preseason game, they're not they're not going far fast, <laughs> like because <laughs> I mean they missed the total. They inc- they had like a total of three incompletions. So, I mean that that's bad. So, and that's between three quarterbacks that Buffalo put up 42 points and had three incompletions in the passing game. Matt Barkley went off, Case Keenum went off, and we saw what Josh Allen did in the first quarter. So, so I mean, if that's any indi- indication of what that defense is going to look like, then I'm I'm a little concerned. Um, 
but I, Russ does make that team better. And I know y'all know how I feel about Russ. So me saying that is, is kind of big. Uh, <laughs> Russ does make that team better. Um, but losing your receiver like Tim Patrick, Tim was the most consistent receiver on that. I ain't saying that because that's my boy. I'm saying that because, I mean, when you look at when Cortland Sutton went down, that's when Tim stepped up and he had been the most consistent thing on that offense. So mm. you lose a receiver like that. You don't know what you're going to get out of Cortland Sutton. Jerry Judy consistently has an issue with drops and that division got better offensively and defensively. That division got better. You look at the Chiefs. <laughs> they they stacked up on the defense this draft. They stacked on the defense this whole offseason. So that receiver room is better over there. So I, I got I got the Broncos going around nine and eight. But I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they go 10 and seven. I wouldn't be surprised at that either. But um, yeah, I have them finishing last in the division. All right. That means you got a hell of a lot of wins coming out of that division then. So somebody's going to have to lose somewhere. Maybe it'll be the teams that we're going to start talking about in a little yeah. bit. Could be Houston, Jacksonville. I don't know. But I don't know. Let's see how we are in all these guys. Let's get to it. All right. We're all torn the AFC South right now. This is what we're doing. All right. This is your guys' division. Let's talk about it. The two top teams, obviously. Let's start with Tennessee because they did. Hey, they had the number one seed last year in all the AFC, and then all hell broke loose in that Bengals game. I don't know what the hell Ryan Tannehill was thinking, but that's why they drafted Malik Willis, and we were talking about him early, Mike. He alluded to it. He looks good. He could do a lot of things, and he's also, again, I, I love the intelligence in him just speaking at the podium saying, look, it's preseason in the first game. He was like, you know, sometimes you run around, you're trying to learn things. In the second game, he looked better. I just, I like the way this kid looks, but I think that, T Tannehill at this point because of the way the crowd feels and the way that he finished the season last year, he's on a really short leash. He really is. So that's the first thing I want to talk about with you guys with the Titans. I feel like Malik Willis can be in there week four or five if they start off terribly Tennessee. And, you know, I'm going to actually just grab their schedule right now if you guys don't have it. But, Mike, you're all over this team. Talk to me about it. Well, I would say this. Uh, your sentiment is a lot of sentiment of all the people that have seen – Malik Willis in preseason. Like, man, Ryan Tannehill, why is he starting? Do you see this guy? You know, we get the, we get the, I get a lot of those reactions and people telling me, oh, he's going to start by week eight. Week eight. I'm like, well, <laughs> bump your brakes. Bump your brakes. Right. Malik Willis right. is talented. Malik Willis can play. Malik, Malik Willis still has to learn the offense, though. <laughs> Very. That's the thing that that is really kind of, you know, kind of holding him back, I would say, at this point. I will, that's for lack of a better word, holding him back because really, you know, nothing really is. But anyway, um, <laughs> as far as Malik Willis, I would say the thing with him is he's talented, but he's still trying to learn the offense, still trying to learn a balance between running and passing. And those are different things that, that he still hasn't committed. And also another thing that people aren't talking about is he never took a snap from under center until now. This is it. So he still has to learn that play action passing, all those different things to get comfortable with. Plus, you um, you know, you, you basically what I'm saying is is basically that Ryan Tannehill is going to be the starter this year. Yeah, there's going to be yeah. no questions about it. There's going to be no questions about it in week ten at this point, unless the Titans are like two and eight. Then at that mm -hmm. point, you might see Malik Willis out there. But if the Titans are in the running for the playoffs or have a shot at the playoffs. Ryan Tannehill will be there. And looking at this defense, which I believe will be a top five defense potentially, I don't think you see Malik Willis until 2023. And I don't think uh, – and I definitely think Ryan Tannehill will probably be uh, the odd man out in that quarterback room, of course, next year. It might be Malik Willis and, you know, there's a, a maybe a veteran perhaps, but just not Ryan Tannehill at that point. That's interesting. There's a lot to take from there. I want to go around, uh, you know, around the horn on this one. There's a lot to take. You're talking about that defense being a top five potentially, and potentially it is there. They have a lot of good players. So let's see. And Vrabel, we know, was an excellent coach. I mean, they had 91 players between COVID and the injured uh, list last year, and still they ended up where they ended up. Um, they start out with the Giants, okay, at home. The Titans start out the Giants. Then they go – Play the Bills, the Raiders, uh, then they got the Colts, Commanders, you know, Colts again. So it's, uh, you know, a, a decent schedule to start things out. So, again, I am definitely with you, Mike, as I, I, I go to uh, Parrish over here. Again, he does Tennessee Titans action all over the place. I'm not saying Malik Willis is going to be the quarterback uh, day one. I, I know you're not saying that I'm saying that, but that, that's what – 
fans are going to be clamoring for if Ryan Tannehill isn't stepping up and winning games. And you know what? Even if they are three and five by week eight, and a lot of teams are way ahead of them, and they're like ninth or tenth in the conference right there, Parrish, I think it's time to bring in Malik Willis and stop horsing around. If that situation arises, what are your thoughts? Yeah, but only if that situation arises. Similar to, what, two or three years ago, when Marcus Mariota was the quarterback, and we started two and four, and Tannehill took his right. time. Yeah, we don't know what that happens. Um, another thing, that playoff game took away from Tannehill. Regular. So last record season, he struck a song. Derek Henry missed nine games. Julio Jones missed 10 games or half or seven games. And he left. He missed about 10 if you count the games. He got hurt in. Uh, AJ Brown missed four or five games. And if you count really more than that, because I remember the Coast game, he got hurt the very first position. So we still finished 12 and five due to Tannehill's leadership. I believe if Tannehill got hurt and any of those stay healthy, we probably had to lose the season just because of uh, his backup compared to Logan Woodside. Logan Woodside compared to you know, again, Deontay mm-hmm. Foreman off the street. That that's just that's the difference. So regular season, Tannehill is fine. It's the playoffs. I'm not worried about the regular season version of Tannehill. It's the yeah. we know the playoffs. Yeah. That's what we worried about. And, and you bring up a great point right there with the playoffs. And you think about a couple of years ago when they went to the AFC Championship, it was all about Derrick Henry and all about the defense. It was Tannehill throwing like eight passes this game, seventeen passes another game. So I got gotcha. you and. I remember watching him in, in Miami a lot, Chris, and I'm like, you know, this guy's better than what people think. Then he goes to the Titans, which are a better team. I'm like, see? And now last year, I'm like, shit, maybe not. You know, maybe he's losing it a little bit. So with all that being said, um, yeah, look, I'm, you, you got to bring in the young kid at some point. Again, they drafted him in the third round, so it's not like people trying to compare it to a Russell Wilson, Matt Flynn type of thing where Matt Flynn, you know, his contract was three years, $26 million. So it's not exactly – the same thing. I'm not going to correlate that, but I'm definitely one that feels like Ryan Tannehill has shown as much as he's going to give. And I do agree with Mike and and, uh, and Parrish that he should be the starter and see what he can do because new wide receivers are coming in. Let's see him work with them. But at the same time, I feel like if they're not going well at some point that his leash is going to be short and Malik Willis will be brought in. Yeah, so we was actually when I was just in a, I was hosting a Twitter space earlier today, and we was just we were actually just talking about that about the Malik Willis Ryan Tannehill thing. Um, I don't I don't think Malik Willis plays this year, but I could see it being a situation like the 49ers with um, when y'all had Colin Kaepernick, Alex Smith, Alex Smith goes down, Kaepernick comes in, and the rest is history. Mm. I could see it being something it could, you know, something like that could happen because we do know Tannehill does have some injury issues that he's dealt with in the past. Um, I'm not wishing any injuries on anybody, but, you know, that's just what we know of Ryan, Ryan Tannehill in certain situations and stuff. So um, I don't but like other than that, I don't see him. I don't see him playing now unless the Titans just end up imploding and it's just a bad season for them then yeah i could see and like they can tell they're not getting into the playoffs then yeah okay you replace ryan Tannehill with malik willis and let's see what the what the rookie can do um right but i mean i haven't watched a lot of the preseason but i i I still think i still think the titans have a legit defense caleb farley's supposed to be healthy this year so i mean there's you know that adds to their their defense then you have christian fulton on the other side so, I mean, there's still a lot there for the Titans to be able to win games, especially when you have a running back like Derrick Henry. Like, we're not even going – like, it's yeah. Derrick Henry, man. So, I mean, when you have a running back like that, everybody's worried about him coming back from his broken foot. But it's a broken bone. It's not a torn ligament. So, I'm not as worried as other people are. Um, and he looks – he looked good and you know, in camp. He's looked good so far. So, I'm not concerned about Derrick Henry and that foot injury from last year. He's going to – he's going to hit the ground doing what he did last year. Um, so like I said, unless they just implode, I don't, I don't see Malik Willis playing this year, unless they implode or or Ryan Tannehill gets hurt. And what Chris said is key. Good. What Chris said is key. Can you hear me? You know, I got you. I got you. My bad. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Oh yeah. I'll say what Chris said is key because Malik Willis is really expected to be the third string quarterback coming into camp. So he's now about to take over the actual backup job. So he wasn't expected to even be in the running at all. We was literally a developmental year. It still will be, but now he will be the backup. So Tannehill does go down. Hopefully he'll be the one to come in. Hopefully we don't keep what's side, but we'll see. 
what they do. Yeah, and I also I also wonder. I'm like, you know, were, were they thinking about drafting Malik Willis at some point, even or it's like, did they fall to him? At, you know, in the third round and say, oh, wow, look what we found over here. I mean, another thing would be like. When you mentioned Trey Lance, when you mentioned the 49ers before, I was like, I know Trey Lance. I'm like, you know, how they worked him in a little bit, gave him some plays here and there to see what he can do and kind of work him in. I mean, maybe they will do that with him. But again, looking at the offense over here, yeah, you're going to want to revolve around Derrick Henry. You're really going to want Austin Hooper to step up, Mike. I mean, it's time for this guy to step up and have another target because we're waiting on Traylon Burks for him to develop. He's just a rookie. And Robert Woods, as much as I like him, he's not going to blow the top off of defenses. So I would get worried about the Titans' offense there if Derrick Henry's not having a, a bang season again. I'll tell you this. Um, now, of course, people are going to think I'm crazy when I make this statement. Okay. We <laughs> there had, uh, Julio Jones and we had A.J. Brown on the other side. But both mm -hmm. of them were consistently in there. But after those two guys, your next best weapon was Nick Westbrook and Kenny. And then, of course, you know, you had Derrick Henry. But at the tight end spot, you had nobody. So now you've got Austin Hooper, Chica Kwonku at the tight end spot. You have Robert Woods. You have uh, Westbrook and Kenny. You have Kyle Phillips, a rookie. And you have Traylon Burks. And also you have mm -hmm. Racy McMath. That's a guy that actually has had a really, really good camp. And he actually is the guy that can take the top off defenses. And he actually is a big guy. I've actually – Met him before, so he's a big guy. But, uh, oh, okay, you know, this offense, I, I will say this year is probably more versatile than the offense was last year. I know a lot of people will say that's crazy. You had Julio Jones and AJ Brown, but who else did you have? <laughs> who else did you have? Can somebody tell me who else that they had? And then, plus, you also think Nick Westbrook and Kenny is better this year. Um, yeah. you also think Gracie McMath is better this year. He actually is getting opportunities. Um, and the other thing that people are missing is look at the versatile pieces of this team. You got Robert Woods that can take handoffs, line up in the backfield. You have Chick Quanko, line up in the backfield, do a few things like John Smith. You have Traylon Burks who can do what? Uh, uh, line up in the backfield too. So you have a lot of different guys that can do a lot of different things. Uh, so the offensive coordinator should have more fun with this offense than he had the offense last year, to be honest. Even if Derrick Henry wants to go down, they still have more versatile weapons you can actually that can actually throw at you to be versatile and to and they have a defense yeah. ball bounce. Got and they also have Hassan, Hassan Haskins who they drafted. So I and I like him a lot. Like I've I even told Mike and him like, bro, I hate that we allowed y'all to get uh, <laughs> Malik Willis and Hassan Haskins because Hassan is a beast. If, if anybody he's, watched him at Michigan, he's a beast. He's finding um, his way. And, he's finding his way. He actually yeah. has gotten better and better. And one thing that he has shown is that he is actually a better pass catching running back than people thought he was. Than people he's thought. He's that a lot, too. Yep. And the thing yep. about Racy McMath, I, I, I liked him <laughs> coming out of LSU last year. Um, I, I liked him a lot. He was fast. He's 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 coming into his own. We I've seen a few catches he's made this this preseason and he's looked amazing out there um even with Traylon Burks I personally think Traylon Burks looks a lot better than what other people may think because there's times that Traylon Burks has been wide the hell open mm -hmm. and Malik Willis has just missed it so like Traylon so like when he doesn't get catches I don't think that's been on that's not that hasn't been on him that's been on the quarterback and that's another reason why I can't see Malik coming in this year is because there's there's been times where they could have got yardage and Malik just kind of he he's still getting used to the game like he's still getting used to the speed of the NFL um the the playbook and all of that because it's a lot different than what he and like I mean I I saw a play I think the other night where he tried to take off running and uh what's the the defensive end or outside back of that play for for Tampa that he went to UW I forget his name um but they had drafted well, him like, last year trying talk about trying yeah, trying and try and hawk them down. Yeah. Like the speed is a lot different than it was at Liberty. <laughs> like it's not the same. So uh so he's getting he's still getting used to that. And um and so I don't know. I like what the Titans have, and it, it reminds me a lot of the Kansas City Chiefs. Everybody talked about you lost uh you lost uh oh boy Tyree Kill. Yeah, and now your receiving room is lacking, but no, they added a lot of pieces to that receiving room. The Titans did the same thing. They added a lot of pieces to that offense that 
I don't. It's not, the South is going to be between us and them. Like that's just what it's going to be. Absolutely. And it's not going to be a huge drop off like these like these people are thinking. It's really not. Yeah, hey, um, and that's hey, one, one, one other guy yeah. I did want to point out too is one guy that has been pretty much uncoverable. Uh, Every time I've watched him. It's Kyle Phillips. Uh, he has been his, route, his route running is his route running is crazy. Yeah. Watch out his for route him. running is crazy. Oh, and I will tell you this: <laughs> one, one more thing about Kyle Phillips. If you saw him outside his uniform, you would think he's like the normal guy, like selling insurance in Nashville. You would never think he's an NFL wide receiver. <laughs> you would never think it. Uh, hey, also, when you're wearing his what, route no. running is crazy. That's all I got to say. His got route running is ridiculous, man. man. Yeah, you see what he did? You saw what he did to Logan Ryan. He gave him a long line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when you see a receiver wearing number 18, it's almost like, wait a second, what the hell's going on over here? But it's like, no, no, this, yeah, this guy can play. It's all right. It's all right. And yeah, the defense you mentioned it. Look, they still got Jeffrey Simmons over there. Bud Dupree is another solid player. Number two, number two defensive tackle in the NFL, in my opinion, Jeff Simmons. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Cam Hayward may have something to say about that, but I, I think Jeffrey Simmons is right there. He is an absolute freaking beast. You know, Kevin Bard, you already mentioned, who's back there. You know, you got Fulton. Let's see what happens to him. Caleb Farley coming back healthy. They, they they could do a really really good job this year, Tennessee. A lot of people are way behind. And again, the last thing to almost wrap it up before we actually will get into their records and whatnot, and what we think is going to happen at the end of the year. We have to remember when all those guys went down: Julio Jones, AJ Brown, Derrick Henry for that amount of time. Ryan Tannehill was winning with backups offensively. Yes, it was mostly defense, but that team, they just got something. So, yes, let's not count out Tennessee at all. There's really no reason to. No reason. We'll get into some fantasy plays that may come out of there, but let's go to your team, Chris, the Colts right now. The biggest question to me is because I think they're very solid all around. Look, they're going to be predicated on the run, predicated on defense, making smart plays, Ryan, uh, Matt Ryan not turning the ball over. The question is, do they have enough offensively to make it happen? I like Michael Pittman Jr. a lot, but that this, you know, this talk about this kid Pierce now, but what else on offense would get me excited to watch the Colts play other than Taylor and Pittman? Um, so yeah, I'm 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 excited for our tight end room. Now we did lose one of our tight ends, he tore his ACL and Drew Ogletree. Um, but outside mm -hmm. of that, Kylan Granson has showed that he can he can catch the ball and run. Um, Jelani Woods has shown the ability to to go up and snag the ball out the air. Um, we already know what Moali Cox can do. Um, mm -hmm. Alec Pierce, he's he's grown uh, since the first preseason game, and I mean, I, I get it; it's only been two. But if you watch the first preseason game, and even in that game, you can see the you can see the correction was corrections were made, and he went out there and applied it to the field. And so I really, I really like that from Alex Pierce. From everything that I've heard, is that hey, he's a worker. Like he, he, he puts in the yeah. work. He does what he needs to do, um, and he, he looks promising. He, he really does. Uh, Ashton Doolin, he'll, he'll be better than what he was last year with with Matt Ryan back there as quarterback. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to how we're going to use Naheem Hines. That's really what I'm looking forward to. Um, Hines was a, a receiver at NC State before he, you know, was moved to running back. Um, so I, I've seen in preseason, not in the games, but like just in camp and stuff, because they're not going to show their full hand in preseason. But like in camp and stuff, I've seen him lined up at, at, at slot. I've seen him um, catching passes from the slot position. So I'm excited to see what kind of things they 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 use with him. Um, and that's kind of to what Mike has said. I've said it multiple times. I don't think Jonathan Taylor gets over 300 carries this season because there's going to be a lot of different ways for us to to move the ball. We're not going to have to rely on Jonathan Taylor as much. You're probably going to see some sets where Naheem Hines is lined up at slot. Jonathan Taylor is in the backfield. You got Paris Campbell out there. You got Michael Pittman out there and Alec Pierce or something like that. It's I mm -hmm. think our offense is going to be is going to look completely different. Um, and that's another thing. Paris Campbell. I'm excited to see him hopefully stay healthy this year yeah 15 yeah. games in three years is not good no 15 <laughs> games in three years is not good no so it's not. i'm hoping this is the season it's a contract year we all know what happens on contract years people ball out of their mind for whatever reason so I i'm hoping this is the year he stays healthy because if it is we have a really dynamic we have a really dynamic wide receiver room um a really explosive wide receiver room at that if paris campbell can stay healthy 
We do need to add a veteran receiver, but it, yeah, that'd be nice to it'd be nice to you know have a veteran wide receiver. I thought that they were going to try to make a trade for Chris Godwin, you know, coming through the offseason. I know that we had talked about a few wide receivers coming in, but <clears throat> now they bring in this Alec Pier- Pierce kid. <clears throat> Excuse me, I apologize. And Nikki is going gaga, thinking that Matt Ryan's like the number one overall fantasy quarterback in the world, and Alec Pierce is going to be like the number one fantasy wide receiver. I'm trying to calm her down. I'm hey, like listen, really excited. About- listen, Nikki. <laughs> Hey, Nikki, I don't Nikki be knowing what she be talking about. <laughs> so I mean, I don't know. She may be on something. <laughs> hey, Nikki, Nikki be on it, man. <laughs> I'm telling yeah, Nikki. She's I'm telling you, she she's, she's writing notes every time. I mean, you know I've been on the Colts like forever. Now she's trying to take <laughs> the team from me. You know, I'm like, that's my AFC team. Leave me the hell alone. But I was trying to make the difference. Like, yo, as I love Matt Ryan, and I think he's gonna be great for the Colts, but he, I'm not going to draft him at fantasy as a fantasy quarterback. I just don't see a whole lot of points coming out of there. So she thinks I hate the Colts all of a sudden because I don't want to draft Matt Ryan you know, as my fantasy quarterback. And I'm just trying to explain to her it's different. It's a different thing. Regular football and fantasy football are two different things. But, no, he could bowl out. I mean, it's certainly possible. And the reason why they're putting Pierce there is because, again, they didn't have many guys. And I remember watching Naheem Hines last year, Mike, spelling uh, Jonathan Taylor and his – versatility and because he's such a different runner than Taylor defenses were flipping out because now you got this fast dude going left going right making catches cutting doing everything so yeah I, I like what Chris is saying and they do have a lot of potential over there offensively and don't don't really? forget the addition of Philip Lindsay yeah I was going to mention him yeah. actually yeah, yeah people forget about him Lindsay. right <laughs> people forget all about him yeah, he's he's hanging in there he's hanging in there you know I, I will say though <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know if I trust him running between the tackles, but I like no. Philip Lindsay. You know, yeah. you know, my, uh, little, for a little push might get him. <laughs> That's it. But yeah, and the defense is rocking, Parrish. They got the Forrest Buckner, Yannick Ngakwe over there. Now it's Darius Shaquille Leonard, who was one of the best linebackers, one of the best defensive guys in the entire game, along with um, you know, even Stephon Gilmore. Are now over there. So, yeah, I mean, this team is definitely, if it's not Tennessee Parish, it's going to be the Colts, and maybe it's going to be both of them in the playoffs. It's possible. Yep, of course. Uh, I don't know who gets our predictions yet, but I might have both of them in the playoffs. But, yeah, the Colts, I definitely, right. they uh, they scare me every year. I mean, as a Titans fan, we never beat Andrew Luck. So I was, you know, still scarred from that whole era, <laughs> going over and living versus him. We start, finally started beating what you call it. Uh, beat them the last couple of years, but it's man, it's always Titans and Colts. Things can come down to the last game. Similar, I compare Matt Ryan's addition to uh Phillip Rivers addition. I think that same season came down to the last game of the season. Both teams ended up making the playoffs. We got in on a tiebreaker, so it probably come down to the tiebreaker for the division this year, honestly. It, it just may be, it just may be. And again, people just downplaying the Titans nah. too much. It's not a smart idea. It, it's it's always the, the case with the Titans, to be honest. When the Titans are, are downplayed, <laughs> the Titans are downplayed, they always play well. When t- people start yeah. talking about them, that's when they lose. And like that's when I, they tell, I tell Parrish <laughs> all the time, I'm like, Parrish, Man. tell your boys to calm down. Hey, you <laughs> don't want the national media talking about them because they're going to lose. What happened? Uh, what happened every against time. Houston? Every time. I, I called it. Yeah, every I called time. It. So one thing, one thing I do want to add, though, with the Colts, one thing that concerns me this year, mm-hmm. and this is because – with Shaq, we don't know. So when we start the season, Shaq probably won't be 100% because he had that back surgery this offseason. But um, at the same time, I don't know if you all have watched this, this preseason, but one thing that scares me is our run defense. Um, without Shaq there, our defense has looked a lot different in the run game. And that's one of the things that scares me. So uh, hopefully with him coming back, you know, when he does come back, then hopefully that changes that. But we... We've been kind of getting gashed in the run game um, this preseason, and that's what our starters out there. So that's one of the things that does worry me this this uh, this season. So, and especially in our in our division, where the run game you get, you add uh, the running back for the Texans, Pierce, who they drafted from Florida. You add Derrick yeah. Henry. You add Travis yeah. Etienne and James Robinson. You got to have a run defense. <laughs> so we'll we'll see. We'll see. What do you think I'll of Quiddy Pay real quick? Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. Go, go I'm, I want to ask Chris about Quiddy Pay, but Mike, you go first. I'll say this though, Gus Bradley. You know, hey, the G is for gashed, so I'll just leave it at that. You said the what? <laughs> the, the G, G is, is for, for gashed. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, hey, he kind of, you know, it wasn't like he was, they were stopping the run a, a bunch in, in, in Oakland. I mean, it's Las Vegas. That's, either, that's so. true. Yeah, we'll see what true. happens. As far do you as like Quiddy Pay? Do you think he fits in? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I I do like Quiddy Pay. Um, if you noticed last year, towards the end of the season, something clicked and is something clicked. A light bulb went off or something, and you could see the talent. You could see why we drafted him in the first round um, mm-hmm. last year. So I, I do like Quiddy Pay, and I like him as uh, the big. So Gus Bradley's defense, you have a Leo who is the backside rusher, which is going to be Yannick most likely. I mean, not even most likely. That's what he's played, you know, ever since he's been in Gus Bradley's defense was the Leo. Um, mm-hmm. And Quiddy will be the big end. And I like Quiddy in that big end as the big end because uh, he's the one that I think he he does a lot better in stopping the run. So, you know, you I, I like Quiddy a lot. I think with him just focusing on football, the work that he's put on put in this offseason – um, I think it's going to pan out this season. I believe I told Mike after last year that, you know, Quiddy might have like nine sacks this year. And I said mm. that after the season ended. <laughs> so it, okay. it it could possibly happen. Um, All right. But I mean, just just because the way the defense is now, uh, especially now, I'm a little bit more confident in that just because it's an attacking defense. Your line is attacking. So right. I, I could see them getting a lot more pressure on the quarterback this year and Quiddy, and Quiddy hitting them nine sacks. <laughs> Yeah, big, I, I got a question. Yeah, you Mike. Don't mind. You know, <laughs> Gus Bradley, you know, I, I don't know. Excuse me for being silly in my mind going off a little bit. But, you know, <laughs> I just have to ask. You've got a Leo defensive end, right? Mm-hmm. Why Do they run a 3-4 or 4-3 with Gus Bradley? It's a 4-3. It's, a it's kind of like mm-hmm. it's kind of like a hybrid type. Like a three, because, four, four, like, three. Sometimes, yeah, because sometimes okay. you'll see Yannick standing up. Sometimes okay. you'll see him with his hand in the dirt. But Yannick is listed as a defensive end. Okay, um, and they so, got I Grover mean, Stewart over there, like right? Was, Isn't Grover yeah, Stewart there? Buck, on Buck, the yeah, Grover. Yeah, Buck and Stewart are the two defensive tackles, and then you have Yannick and Quiddy as the defensive end. The only reason I ask is because I'm like, man, you know, you name a one defensive end, Leo. Can't you name the other linebackers like Donatello, Michelangelo, and Raphael? Just talk to <laughs> here you, go. Here you, you go. go. I mean, just saying. I just was saying, man. Can't you just name it all? You know, have a kind of. Let the coach be nicknamed Master Splinter, you know. Hey, uh, Clark, no, Shredder, no, you know, just go all, just go all in with the hey, coach. Clock, <laughs> clock out for me, my boy. Oh, no. <laughs> just saying, oh, that's great. That that's great. Absolutely Mike. not. Absolutely not. Can we? Uh, can we? Can we call the? Can we call the quarterback of the other team the brain? And uh, who's gonna be Casey Jones? We throw a tight end, be Casey Jones. Right, Steve, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Ali, be Casey Jones. I would love it if it came out with David the Jason Mess. That'd be perfect. Oh man, <laughs> now these definitely the ones battling it out. So, Parrish, there is another team that people think may make some noise in this division, and that's not Houston. We'll get to them after it is Jacksonville. So, the first question with Jacksonville is after watching. Definitely Lawrence getting better last year, watching a little bit in the preseason. Again, we can't go too much off that. The man was the number one pick. Is he going to make good on being the number one pick? And by making good on that, is he going to make the Jacksonville Jaguars a relevant playoff team coming up in the next, you know, one, two, three seasons as they work around him? And first things first, let me shout out to Chris, man. I can't get that. I, I ended up watching uh, the water boy probably a week after he made a tweet after the uh, NFL Hall of Fame game. Jack Walsh got towed up and he was like, he played the Rob, um, I got the man name uh, on that movie. And he was like, oh man, we suck again. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, right. That's right. We stink. <laughs> we st- <laughs> I had to get that. That was so funny. I know what you're man. talking about. No. <laughs> but um, I do see an improvement. They <laughs> should take over third place. Uh, they should overtake Houston for third place. I do think Trevor Lawrence. Doug Peterson is a really good coach. Um, and yes. I do think he's yeah. going to help Trevor Lawrence out a lot. Travis Etienne being back is going to help ease some of the pressure off of him. Both him and James mm-hmm. Robinson mm-hmm. helping out. They, um, they paid Christian Kirk a lot of money. So I I will hope 
he uh you know does something so <laughs> i do i do believe uh trevor lawrence does take a step i mean even pay man in his rookie year i mean he threw like wow well, he threw a buku in the i think he threw like 10 more interceptions than touchdowns so it can happen yeah. trevor lawrence I, I do believe he has the right he has the right structure now he got urban meyer and all the mess that went out last year so i believe he should get better this season mm-hmm. no doubt no, I like that all, man. I'm with you. Yeah, Doug Peterson is absolutely the right coach. I mean, if he can let you know, make Carson Wentz look good and Nick Foles look good in the same damn season, I mean, that's quite freaking impressive. So Doug Peterson being over there definitely help out, bring a sense of mature to the team. And, you know, and, you know, Trevor Lawrence, again, he is a grown up. I mean, he's been the first round pick since he was six years old. Everybody knew it and he kept growing his hair out ever since. And he's got Goldilocks and sunshine all over the place, flowing out the back of that damn helmet. And he's going to have to make it look good to guys like Marvin Jones and Zay Jones. So they're going to have a lot of first initials on that team. And like you mentioned, Christian Kirk, regardless of what he's getting paid, he should be, you know, at least the number one or number two wide receiver on that team. You already mentioned bringing Travis Etienne back. Evan Ingram, Giant fans are like, big freaking deal. But I will tell you this, Mike, real quick. Trevor Lawrence is Damian's Quantum Leap quarterback of the year. Last year he had um, Jameson, uh, Jameis Winston. He got hurt, unfortunately, and then he stole uh, my guy, uh, Josh Allen, from Buffalo the year before that. So he's been on a pretty good roll. So is this year Trevor Lawrence's quantum leap year? I'll say this. Trevor Lawrence will probably get about mm, – I, I have him throwing 25 touchdowns, maybe 10 interceptions this year. So That's I pretty good. necessarily, you know, tearing it up out the frame, but he's definitely going to yeah. have a solid season. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention about the Kirk deal. A lot of people have mentioned about the Kirk deal. It's destroying this. It's doing that. You know, uh, a lot of people don't don't know that he's only getting paid like one half million in base salary this year. Actually, <laughs> but uh, you know, that's really what he's getting paid. More of it is more bonus than anything. What he did was so, get other people. Uh, that's what worked out. He, he got a whole lot of other people paid. That's what he did. Yeah, he got yeah. people excited like the Pointer Sisters, basically. <laughs> So, um, you know, as far as, uh, you know, everything else, you know, I- I'll say this. So, you know, Giants fans, they're going to be mad at the Jaguars this year because Evan Ingram, I believe, is going to have a Pro Bowl season as tight end. Ooh, you got some hot takes today, man. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Daniel Jones, what you, what you expect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Danny Dimes. Hey. Like Danny Dimes. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> That's not Daniel Jones' fault that Daniel Jones hit him in his chest and he couldn't catch the ball. <laughs> Daniel Jones <laughs> hey, hey, everybody, everybody drop fans there once in a while, you know. <laughs> Man, come on now. That, listen, listen. I know, I know. Old boy made some, old boy made some spectacular pass, or catches. There's, you know, the one hand that bounced off the shoe and all of that stuff. He made some spectacular <laughs> catches. But the ones that you're supposed to catch, that hit you square in the hands. <laughs> But he's been working on it. Evan Ingram has been working on it. I will say that. It's, he's a, money been year. On it with it's a money year for him. And, and it is, know, a, money and, and it is thing, a money year. And the one thing I will say, though, is different between him and Paris Campbell is he's been healthy. Paris Campbell got to be healthy yeah. and catch the ball. <laughs> he got focused on two things, Paris Campbell. But Paris, Paris don't have an issue with catching. He just has an issue with his foot. Hey, that's so true, too. You know. Availability is the best ability. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Can't make the club in the tub. It is. Can't it make is. the club in the That's tub. That's a fact. That's a fact. Oh, man. Yeah, and also hey, James Robinson there too. That's a nice. They got a nice one-two punch over I, there defensively. But the other Josh Allen is definitely their best player, right? Defense, Parish no defense there. Yeah, yep. I'll I'll say this though. Defensively though, I expect Josh Allen to get mm, about twelve sacks this year. The last time he had a viable weapon outside of him was Ndakwe, who is playing for the Indianapolis Colts, right. and he had ten and a half sacks right. as a rookie. I think he gets double figures again, maybe about 12 sacks. I still don't think the Jaguars will make the playoffs or anything like that. I ain't crazy enough to say that. But, <laughs> you know, I do think they'll be better and be the third team in this division, yes. Yeah, yeah I think the first third. I, I, go ahead, Chris. Oh, I was just going to say, and to piggyback off of what Michael said, that's kind of why I see Quiddy taking a leap this year, too, because he has Yannick on the opposite side. Um, but also with, with Sunshine, um, I yeah. think he I think he does take a leap a leap this year, but some some of his throws still concerned me. Like he still trusts his arm a little bit too much. Um mm. like I mean he threw a dime, like he threw a beautiful pass the 
what was it yesterday on the sideline? Yeah, I think it was Marvin right Jones. over the defender's head. It, yeah, that was sweet. Yeah, but you but you have a better defender. I think that's an interception. I mean, because it's really it's really like right at his fingertips. I think you have a better defender out there. That's probably an interception. Um, but like I said, it was a beautiful pass. It was a it was a dime. It was it was a dime. Um, yeah. But his, his some of his throws are questionable. And when you have some of those throws, as far as like just depending on your arm a lot, that's when you, you kind of start seeing some turnovers. Um, so we'll see. The arm the arm builds him out a lot. So we'll see. I mean, we'll see what happens. We'll see. Right, no doubt. Chris, but I, I like him. I think he Chris, has a better year this year. Chris, are you saying he's yeah, gonna have a know. lot of those no, 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 yes throws, basically? <laughs> wait, wait, don't, right, uh, there we go. don't throw it. <laughs> I mean, because when I when I saw that, when I saw that throw, when I saw that throw, I was like, oh no, 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 that's gonna be a pick. And that's like, oh shit. <laughs> so Damn. you know it, <laughs> it's it, he's gonna have some of those throws. I saw I saw him in the first game, I saw him last game. He's gonna have some of those throws. He will, he will. But Doug Peterson should clean it out, you know, Parish. I know the we're kind of thinking in the same way. It's like uh, he may not take a quantum leap to like another solar system or something like that, but he's going to take some steps. And look, if it's 25 touchdowns and 10 picks, that's pretty good if you can let your defense do the work. But I don't know, Parrish, would you be worried about starting two rookies at linebacker? They got Devin Lloyd and Trayvon Walker. Not, not to say that they're bad players at all, but if that's going to be the meat of the middle of your defense, I would be a little bit worried about that. Because they, they lost Miles Jack. All they got is Josh Allen. Hey, they're rebuilding team. That's where well, rebuilding teams do. They got to start two rookies. You're right. <laughs> yeah, like they, yes. like they're doing much. Hey, I will say though, they are starting uh, Oluquan. They did bring in from the Falcons, so he is somewhat a guy that's a veteran for them. Oh but yeah, go yeah. Ahead, yeah uh, how do you say his first name? Foside? Foside? I can't even say his first Look, name. I say I say Oluquan. I say Oluquan, and I call it there. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not trying to, not trying to, not trying to, you know, I, I will learn his name for everyone's listening. I will learn how to say his name. I don't want to disrespect him and say his name. That's why I, don't say it. That's why I didn't say his first name. Oh, jeez. Hey, at least you get the last name right. That's impressive enough. I can't even do that. <laughs> That's pretty good. But yeah, Shaq Griffin back there now, Darius Williams. Look, we'll see what happens. So I, I, I agree. I think that, look, I don't think they're a, even a 500, you can't go 500 unless you obviously tie a game. But I would say they're probably like more like an eight and nine team right now, which is a significant jump from what they were last year. What three and fourteen, right? Oh, so come on. Hey, uh, also you can't forget about Cisco back there at the uh, safety. No, hey, not Cisco. That's right. Hill. Cisco. That's right. Uh, Andre Cisco. Yep. <laughs> that's true. And, I love and if it. you watch, Ooh. if you watch their defense, if you watch their defense, their defense flies around like they fly around. That, fast. that young defense flies around for real. So, yep. yeah, they 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 are, they are very fast. Yep. You got a good point. Time. You're right. They are. That helps. Athleticism makes up for a lot of you know early mistakes that are going to come about that they will learn throughout the rest of the year. You're right. All right, let's move it along because I know Mikey, you got another thing going on, and uh, it's already getting late where everybody is, except for you on the West Coast. What is it? So like freaking twelve o'clock, Chris, where you are? Jesus Christ, man! It's like almost, I'm, not <laughs> I'm hating over here. Right. It's, it's, it's five. It's five fifty, and still, you know, still some sunshine outside. Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm hating. Shy. I just want to let you know, me in, in Nashville, Tennessee, I'm hating. I'm hating. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, so let's hit up them Texans right now. We started showing a little bit of promise last year with Davis Mills and hooking up with Brandon Cooks, who seems to be their only freaking guy on the team. Talk about rebuilding. Yeah, they're rebuilding and. To me, it's really not fair on Lovey Smith. I'm glad he's got a job. Don't get me wrong, but this is like one of the worst jobs, unless you're Chicago, basically, or Seattle, that you can have. But they're going to have to give him time, Mike, to build this team up and let it become his team. So a couple of questions that go on in there. Lovey Smith, do I believe he's the guy? Yeah. I mean, he's him and Tony Dungy, you know, will go down in history as being the first two African-American quarterbacks to take their teams to the Super Bowl. One of them had to win and happened to be Dungy's Colts of Peyton uh, Manning. But we'll never forget Devin Hester running back that first one. That was incredible in the rain down here in Miami. I'm getting sidetracked too much. Let's go back. Is Davis Mills the guy for the Houston Texans right now? Do you think they should stick with him? Let him see what he's got. Work with this running back, Damian Pierce. Um, is that his name? I'm trying to get his name correctly. If they can work with him. I don't know. Um, 
we don't expect much of them out of this year, Mike, but what do you see from the Houston Texans and who they're going to keep and what the season may look like? Well, from all indications, Davis Mills is the guy they're going with. He's came in, come into camp with a little bit more swagger, a little bit more bounce to his step, and he knows he is the guy. Doesn't have to look over his shoulder to see if Tyson, uh, if uh, Tyron Taylor is there or anyone else. So he is the guy. So, you know, with that being said, of course, the offense is his, and they're going to see if he is the guy. If he isn't the guy, of course, they do have a couple first-round picks to pick the guy for them yeah, next. That, so, right. yeah, he's going to get every opportunity to be the guy. Of course, it hurts that John Mechie the third is out this year. You know, uh, God bless him, you know, as he, uh, you know, battles with cancer right now. Yes. But, uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, he's going to have a guys like uh, now another guy to watch out for in terms of tight ends, Brevin Jordan. Uh, uh, tight end out oh, of Miami. Yeah. Definitely an athletic guy that can get down the field and make some things happen. And I, I expect him to do better this year. Then you have, of course, the best wide receiver in the AFC South, in my opinion. That would be Mr. Brandon Cooks. So there you go. So I think he has a couple weapons to do some things. Damon Pierce, hey, I, I hear all the talk about him, but I need to see if, you know, when, when week one happens and not, you know, week wow. two, three in the preseason. So I understand the excitement, but. Let, let's see it in the regular season first. So exactly, you know. So they're going to exactly. they basically give him every opportunity to succeed, and they've given him a few weapons, although it may not be well known weapons to, to to actually work with. You know, God bless him. But hopefully, that yeah. offensive line can hold up things, and Mister, uh, hopefully, Mister False Start can actually not false start a bunch this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that works out, right? And you're right. I mean, it's it's mostly Brandon Cooks. I mean, their offensive line, okay, they tried to work on it a little bit, um, but Laramie Tunsil, probably their best guy. Defensively, they went after Derek Stingley real early. I think he was what the third pick overall, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, going for a cornerback, which is interesting. And they're gonna have three starters, I think, on defense. Is it two or three with uh Christian Harris and um What's this guy's last name? Petrie or Jalen Petrie, I think it is. So, yeah, talk about rebuilding uh, Parish, man. They got a lot of work to do over here. So, yeah, you can't – that's the one thing I'm talking about with Lovey Smith. You cannot judge him on this season alone. It's completely and totally impossible. So give him time. Let them build through the draft. Make trades if they can. And, and let's see what they can pull off. Yeah, hopefully they give him time because, I mean, I thought David Cody should have got more than one year. But, you know. I agree. So – that's Houston You're for right. you. Um, I do. I think I don't know. When I think of Davis Mills. I think he's good, but I can't help. I can't help but to think of uh, Drew Lock. You remember Drew Lock's rookie year at the end of the season? The the season. Yeah, all the hype going to the offseason, going to his second year, then he flopped. Davis Mills kind of is on the yeah. same trajectory, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not sure what to oh, make of. I kind of just get Drew Lock vibes with him, but I do think he is a pretty solid quarterback. So he definitely needs to get the opportunity to show what he can do this season. Um, unfortunately, he ain't got as many. I mean, you got Brandon Cooks, uh, you got Damian Pierce, but offensive line, just the rest of the team, talent wise, he's lacking a lot. So it's going to be hard to really judge him off of this season as well. But unfortunately, that might be the case. Yeah, that might, yeah, that's probably, probably their only. Well, maybe they'll have two, Chris. Maybe they'll have two fantasy players when it comes to Pierce at running back. If he, you know, if he's going to get the load share of the job and. Uh, Brandon Cooks, obviously, unless they start to figure out how they can guard this guy, which apparently nobody can, no matter what uniform he's wearing. It's absolutely unbelievable. It really is crazy. It really is crazy. But I want to recap everything going back over here. I know that we wanted to get into Henry a little bit, Caleb Farley a little bit, and a Christian Kirk's deal a little bit. I know we talked a little bit about them, but to recap the entire thing, the first thing I want to do with you guys is talk about who's the best at each position. We talked about wide receiver already. I agree with you, Mike. I think Brandon Cooks is the best wide receiver in the division. Chris, do you agree? Yeah, the, and the only reason I'll give it to him is because of longevity. Um, that's the mm. only reason I would say that he's the best because I, I honestly think Michael Pittman is, but because Brandon Cooks has been doing it longer, then um, I, I, I give it to him. And one thing I do want to touch on, too, just real quick, um, like Mike said, I want to see Damian Pierce week one. I want to see him do what he did in preseason when he's going against dudes that are praying for a roster spot. I want to see if he can do that against the starters. Also, look out for ne Nico Collins for the Texans, Reverend Jordan, like Mike said, and that defense is another defense that's young, but that defense, that defense is fast. Uh, the Texans' defense is fast. They, they swarm the ball as well. Um, now, would that translate to wins? Who knows? 
because mm. once you once you really get out there and you have to go against more methodical offenses, you can't play as fast because you really got to think and you got to be in your position. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But like I said, Nico Collins, Brevin Jordan, watch out for those two. I think those are going to be very viable weapons for Davis Mills this year. Very interesting. All right. All right. So it may not just be Brandon Cooks after all. Uh, all three of us so far do agree. We know that Michael Pittman Jr. could take that mantle, uh, Parrish. But do you still think it's Brandon Cooks at this point? Yeah, I think this is uh, – I think Brandon Cooks is the best. I think this is the proof of year for Michael Pittman pretty much uh, to prove that he's the mm. true number one receiver. I do. I, I love Michael Pittman Jr., so I think he's pretty good. So this is his year to prove he's the best in the division with A.J. Brown gone. No doubt. Yeah, I had Michael Pittman in like three and two out of three of my fantasy leagues last year, and he yeah he did a pretty good job for me. It wasn't too bad. And now with a different quarterback throwing to him, um, and his name is Matt Ryan. I think Matt Ryan is probably the best quarterback in the AFC South. Parish, am I right about that, or would you go with someone else? Maybe a different Ryan. <laughs> um, I think it's. I, I would say he is, but I think it's closer than probably people may think. Uh, I think at this stage of his career, Ryan Tannehill is closer to Matt Ryan than the MVP Matt Ryan. But Matt Ryan's still uh, solid. Uh, he should have a little better protection in Indy uh, than he did in Atlanta, and he has better weapons. So I expect him to have a bounce back here this year. Yeah, he's got it. You know, Jonathan Taylor made for him to go do this thing, Mike. I mean, he, he's got it ready. He's got his run game. You know, he just got to make completions and be accurate. Matt Ryan, is he the best quarterback in this division, or are you going with someone else? Well, I would go with Matt Ryan, but no, I'm, I'm not even going to play like that. But, yeah, I'm going to go. Matt Ryan <laughs> is the best quarterback in the division. Uh, I mean, I do like Ryan Tannehill in spurts, but mm -hmm. I can't say he's better in terms of thinking the game and, you know, controlling the offense, you know, more than Matt Ryan at this point in his career. I can't say that. I know it sounds weird to say. This is almost <laughs> like a – Strange thing to say, but I wish that Matt Ryan had Ryan Tannehill's athleticism. I know that's so freaking weird to say, but he would be that much better of a quarterback, I know, because Tannehill can actually run with the ball a little bit, and he's a big boy. I wouldn't want to tackle him either. But, um, Chris, uh, you all about it? Your new quarterback being the best in the, in the division? Yeah, yeah. I, I think Matt Ryan's the best in the division, and I agree with Pete Shark that um, it's closer than what people think, but I think he's the best uh in terms of just what he can do and the team that's around him. I think Matt Ryan can do a lot more with that team. Um, now, as far as his athletic ability, don't sleep on Matt Ryan running the ball. Don't, don't sleep on, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Look at nah, Mike right now. <laughs> nah, but mostly, mostly Matt like, Ryan don't just. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you better say that all summer, man. All right. <laughs> nah, but don't uh not not necessarily running the ball, but like just him <laughs> the way he moves in the pocket. Like he he has a good pocket presence. So like him um moving up in the pocket, being able to make some throws, not necessarily running the ball, but like making some throws on the run and stuff. So like it, I don't once again, if you watch some of the preseason games, he's been able to get away from defenders and and make some throws. So he don't, don't, do he's not as athletic as Ryan Tannehill, but he could do a little bit. Now. Okay. He could do a little bit. Okay. Don't, be, don't be talking about quarterback. Oh, I can tell you Mike's face for expression, man. Mike, Mike's doing everything he can. To not be <laughs> hey, Mike, hey, Mike's buddy, though. <laughs> Sorry, man. Yeah, I, buddy, I couldn't man. help it, man. I couldn't help it. But, uh, you know, I did, you know, if I see Matt Ryan fake out the defender this year, Hey, man, I, I might have to save you some money for that for that comment. You might. Hey, listen, listen, man. Y'all, y'all saw Matt Ryan. I forget who who it was on the Saints, but he, you know, gave him a little uh uh, and I don't feel. Don't sleep on my dog, man. Yeah, that's why I think I cut the next week. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you out? Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> they, they said they don't time him with the speed. Watch they time him with a sundown. <laughs> I'm kidding, man. I'll stop. I'll stop. You got to confidence if he's going in the right direction and everything. Oh, my gosh. Just because he ain't as fast as Trey Lance. Don't, t don't talk about my quarterback like that. <laughs> nah, man. Everybody is. can't beat Trey Lance and Lamar Jackson. He's still, that's right? Right. He's still the best that's quarterback right. in the AFC South. He thinks the game very, very well. Nah, for sure. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> 
Well, the running back now, now that's up for debate. People weren't thinking about that this time last year, but now it's definitely up for debate when you got Jonathan Taylor and you got freaking Derrick Henry. I don't know who the best is right there, Chris. I mean, are you going to be biased or are you taking your biased bifocals off and you're going to look at this with, uh, with NFL <laughs> nah, it's, it's not up for debate. It's, it's not up for debate. I still think Derrick Henry is the best running back in the AFC South. But it's close. It's it's close. Jonathan Taylor is still up there. Like, even if you rank them running backs as far as like the top ten in the NFL, is Derrick Henry, Jonathan Taylor, in my opinion. Um, we have two of the best running backs in the NFL. No doubt. And so, but I, I give it to Derrick Henry. When you <laughs> listen, Derrick Henry had nine hundred and something yards last year through I think like eight games, <laughs> and he led the league for the next five weeks. <laughs> right. So I mean. <laughs> There, there's really nothing to, you can't say nothing about that. It's Derrick Henry. Like <laughs> that's real talk. That's, all that's real say. talk right there. Because everybody gets stuck. In, you know it. We all get stuck in the moment. Jonathan Taylor. Wow, look what he did last year. Now he's obviously the number one fantasy guy in every damn draft that I have done, whether it's a mock draft or a real draft, Mike. So they all jump in all over Jonathan Taylor. But Derrick Henry's been doing this for more than a minute. So I would have to give him the edge too. Yeah, I'm going Derrick Henry, and I'm going to go for a different reason, not necessarily just because he's Derrick Henry, but because I actually have seen this man this offseason, and he is huge. And people that have covered the Titans, they're literally telling me, hey, he looks bigger than he's ever been. I'm like, are you serious? But, you know, the thing is, with uh, with Derrick Henry, though, when I actually uh, I got to, you know, listen in on him at the podium a couple times, and the thing that's different about him this year is he seems like he's a man a little bit on a mission. He seems mm. he, he sees people doubting him. He hears that. You know, the thing that people talk about with, well, players don't really hear all that's going on and players say that. No, no, no. Players are always listening. Um, so to me, I think that little bit of edge and motivation is going to push him to run even harder and be even more of a threat for the Tennessee Titans, which – is not very good for the rest of the NFL, especially, you know, the guys that don't want to get spent around like tops or thrown out of the, out of the club, like, uh, you know, Josh Norman and Mr. Uh, Earl Thomas. So, <laughs> you know, it just, it is what it is, you know, but Hey, we're going to see uh, Derrick Henry do his thing. And I, I'm picking Derrick Henry. Yeah. No, and Chris, you made that great point where he only played like, you know, 14 minutes and still led the league in rushing for like the next month and a half, which was absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, Parrish, man, I, I, look, we're all going with Henry on this one. He is, look, he ran for 2,000 yards just recently, and, and they still gave Aaron Rodgers the damn MVP. I'm still pissed off about that. Yeah, it was a lot of pissed Titans fans last year because – Jonathan Taylor was in the running for MVP, but the year before, Derrick Henry wasn't even mentioned when he had 2,000 yards. So, you know, that made a lot of fans feel the same way. But, yeah, it's still, man, Derrick Henry still rests the crown until Jonathan Taylor officially snatches it for you to still lead the That's right. For, like, the next five weeks after you get hurt, yeah, it just don't make any sense. But <laughs> also another thing, uh, to go back to Mike's point about Derrick Henry being hungry, one, he see the people down him. Two, Ryan Taylor, Ryan Taylor ain't the only person who struggled in the playoff game. Derrick Henry, now mm -hmm. he did come off the entry, but he struggled this way up, and he struggled last year against the Ravens. So both him and Ryan Tannehill Hill have something to show in, in, uh, in the playoffs this upcoming year. Oh, I like that. I like that. That's 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 a hell of a good point. I like that a lot. And the, the other amazing thing to close that Derrick Henry real quick is the fact that he wasn't even supposed to come anywhere near back last year, and he did make it back for that first playoff game. Was he Derrick Henry? No, but the fact that he made it back is just – Something to show you that he's not made out of real human bones. He's got like I don't know, like ant, like that Wolverine shit in him, antimanium, or whatever the hell they call it. Man, this guy's like bionic. It's crazy. Yo, all right, the tight end is really hard because there rarely aren't a lot of good ones there. And Parrish, by default, I went with Austin Hooper. There's really not much else. I didn't know who else to go to. Is there a better tight end in that division? I'm not sure. Uh, sure. Maybe it's more. It might be a Ricky, uh, but we'll see uh, what happened with these uh, Rickies. Uh, I got what Jelani, uh, Jelani Woods is his name for the Colts. Uh, then you got, of course, uh, Chick Gunkle for the Titans. But uh, Evan Ingram, I don't, I don't think he would consider him the best tight end, but he might be in the running. But I would say Austin Hooper, I think I do expect him to get back to kind of what he was in Atlanta. I don't know how Cleveland used him. They had back in Mayfield, the quarterback, right? Tan Hills building back in Mayfield. So I expect him to be used better. And also the Titans uh, brought on Tim Kelly 
the uh, former offense coordinator for the Texans, who uh, called plays with Deshaun Watson. They we brought him on to assist Todd Downey in the passing game as a passing game coordinator. So that should help. That's a good call. That's that's a good call right there. All right, no doubt. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I don't know. You know, right now, the Titans, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry, Houston has got like Pharaoh Brown and, you know, we're talking about Brevin Jordan where he may come out of nowhere. Mike, I certainly is possible, but I still, it's really by default I have to go with Austin Hooper as the best tight end in the division. I know Chris is probably going to say Mo Alley Cox, but we'll get to him in a second. No, he, I don't think he's going to say Mo Alley Cox unless they talk about <laughs> basketball games with NFL players. But uh, <laughs> as far as. <laughs> As far as uh, it goes, I would say I'm going to go Evan Ingram. I'm going to go Evan Ingram as the best tight end. Yo, yo, you love Evan Ingram this year. You, I, now I know yes. who you drafted a tight end, so I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> no, no, no. I just said for the AFC South, but, uh, you know, it's still a whole wide world out there. But, you know, I'll say that uh, I'll go Evan Ingram. I think just I have a feeling this year he's just going to have a year. I just have a feeling yeah. Well, if anybody should be pissed off, it's him. I'll tell you that right now because he's been getting killed everywhere he goes, man. I mean, this guy hears the boo birds everywhere. But I don't know, Chris. Are you gonna are you gonna go uh, in a different direction with the tight end? Yeah, I'm. I'm I actually am, and I'm actually am going by Ali Cox. And the reason I, I am I is, I mean, I get Mike think that you know Mike thinks that Evan Ingram's gonna have this spectacular season. I mean, he possibly could. He really could. Um. But the thing with Matt Ryan as our quarterback, he's going to utilize the tight ends. That's one of the things he will utilize. One of the things that uh, Carson Wentz didn't really utilize last year. Now, Mo mm-hmm. did have four touchdowns last year, but also we had Jack Doyle. He took up some of the time as well. Um, Austin Hooper, I, I'm not sold on him just because he's had some down years recently. Uh, I mean, so, but who knows? Austin Hooper, he's athletic. He could he could get back on track to where he was when he was with Atlanta with Matt Ryan. So this is <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Like with Moali Cox and with Matt Ryan, he's going to be utilized a lot more. Jelani Woods, he's still coming around, but uh, Jelani Woods is very athletic. Um, people forget he was a quarterback at Oklahoma State before he got switched yeah. to tight end. Mm-hmm. Um, and so – with Jelani Woods, he's going to be used a lot like differently in our offense. Don't be surprised if you see him taking some some ending arounds and stuff like that in this offense. Um, but I I have to go Molly Cox, man. I, I just think he'll have an up year with Matt Ryan. Um, and he's going to prove why they were comfortable with moving on from Jack Doyle and and uh just sticking with Mo. And I mean, we did draft two other ones. The Drew Ogletree, I think, actually would have got more snaps than Jelani Woods this year because Drew Ogletree was balling in camp and in preseason. So, but we'll see. I, I, I'm going with Mo, though. All right, all right. I wouldn't be surprised to see them run two tight end systems this year, uh, with the way that they run the ball also and try to get sneaky on offense. They'll, so I, I'm very interested. They'll definitely be running. They'll definitely be running two and three tight end sets this year. Yeah, like Tylen yep. Branson, Mo Ali Cox, and Jelani Woods definitely. I'm trying with you, to, uh, they're, they're trying to do a little Titans action, I see. <laughs> <laughs> it's a copycat league, isn't it? It's a copycat league. Well, the last uh, category, I guess, in this whole thing is who's got the best defense. And I'll go first. I, I do think it's the Colts. I know that a lot of people most say, no, it's probably the Titans. But no, I, I like the Colts this year. And if Darius Slander can come back and be himself, he is the leader of this defense. He's incredible. I know it, Shaquille, I should be calling him, but – Chris, you talked about Quiddy Pay before, DeForest Buckner, Yannick Ngakwe, Stefan Gilmore now back there, Blackman, and we'll see if he can step up to the plate. Um, yeah, they got a lot of good defensive players, and it all starts up front. So if they can get home, Chris, with you know their front four without blitzing too much, then I think that uh, the Colts probably do have the best defense in this division. It ain't Jacksonville, it ain't Houston. I guess Tennessee's the only ones going to give them a run for their money. So what do you think? Yeah, everything's between the Colts and Tennessee this year. No, really like is. no matter what, no matter what, everything is between those two teams. Um, true. But I'm going to have to go Tennessee, um, just because. Okay. The reason I go Tennessee is because they're in a they're in a defense that they've been in for the last few years, so they're used to running this defense. The Colts is a brand new defensive system, so it's going to take some time for them to gel and then be able to really show what they have. Um, yeah, we added some pieces in Stefan Gilmore, Yannick Nguakwe, and stuff like that. Um, and I mean, we have a we added to our defensive line. We have a bunch of rotational pieces to our defensive line. 
that really fit Gus Bradley's system. But once again, it's one of those things where it just takes some time for everybody to gel and to mesh. We still don't know who our uh, who our other outside corner is going to be outside of Stephon Gilmore. We know who's locking down the slot. That's Kenny Moore. But as far as the outside, it's still between Isaiah Rogers and Brandon uh, F- Facion. Or uh, sorry if I'm butchering his last name, but it's still between those two. Faison. Still a battle that's going. Faison. Faison. Okay. It's, like, it's, like it's still Faison, a battle man. between those two. You said what? Like Donald Faison, man. Or Faison uh, <laughs> Love, man. Same thing. Uh, yeah, got you. Got you. But yeah, so right. it's still between those two on who's going to be the outside corner. All right, so I'm hearing you. Indy's going to take a little bit of time to adjust the new system. That makes sense in Tennessee. Mike and Parrish, as you know, have been in this, you know, and they got Jeffrey Simmons, as we talked about, one of the best defensive linemen. Bo Dupree came over from Pittsburgh a couple of years ago. Their secondary is sweet with Kevin Byard, who's one of the best back there. And now Caleb Farley is going to be playing ball. So maybe it is Tennessee, even though I'm saying Colts right now and you have a Colt fan saying Titans. I don't know, Parrish, what would you say? Yeah, I agree. I said the Titans, not that much. I think I mean, it's almost a wash throughout, but the Titans do have the better pass rush. Also, the Titans, and Chris said, the Colts might struggle in run defense. The Titans, we were number two in run defense, and we was two yards away from being number one. Hmm. On surpassing the Ravens last season. Um, hmm. And we returned that whole front seven that ended last season with Zach Cunningham coming over from the Texans. David Long Jr. is one of the most underrated linebackers in the NFL, and he might show out this season and become a top 10 potential candidate. Also, you know, we paid Harold Landry, so we're back. But Dupree is a four-year removed from the ACL injury on the D-line. So we got a young secondary cornerback, but Roger McCrary, the second-round draft pick from Auburn. Um, That's right. Raven reviews about him. So him, Caleb Farley, Christian Fulton, and uh, Elijah Molden back there as a uh, cornerback. And we already had one of the better safety teams with Kevin Barry and Amanda Hooker. So – yeah, I say the Titans, but the Colts are right there. I think uh, just those little tidbits put the Titans over the top. Not bad. I had forgot about McCreary also. That's right. I, I wish I had these uh, these rosters in front of me. I had forgot about McCreary. That was a hell of a draft pick right there and where they got him, too. Very nice. All right, Mike, you finish it off. I'm the only one to say Colts so far. Uh, your compadre, it's over here. They say Titans. Do you agree? I will be the third member of the Titans crew. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm rolling with the Titans. I mean, honestly, they can get pressure with their front four. You, you forgot everybody forgot to mention right. Nico Archer, who was an unquestioned leader, in my opinion, of the Tennessee Titans defensive line. Um, yeah, I know it hurts. It hurts, Chris. I know he used to be on your team. I know. But uh, <laughs> as far as uh, <clears throat> the linebacker crew, I mean, I definitely think that Zach Cunningham is going to be able to do a little bit more this year with a little bit more familiarity with the pieces around him. Um, Also, what I will tell everyone to take a look at is look at the physique of uh, Caleb Farley this year. You know, he was a little bit skinnier from talking to, uh, you know, a lot of reporters around the team. He was a little bit skinnier last year. You look at him now, he's actually got definition to him. Word on the street, word on the street, he was working out with Derrick Henry this offseason. Oh uh, boy! He was doing <laughs> actually, actually, he was doing a little more with. Uh, actually, he's actually was working out a little bit more with Robert Woods. Actually. Robert Woods, yeah. They both were. Uh, they ACLs. both were actually, yeah, recovering from the ACLs. So mm-hmm. they were actually working out a little more. And then also, um, I would say that you know Elijah Molden, he still hasn't quite practiced or played a lot, but he's still going to be the nickel guy. And he can make a lot of plays you know, from the uh, from the nickel position. So I mean, they're 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 pretty deep there in the secondary with a lot of young talent. Um, and uh, you know Shane Bowen, you know, for as much as people dogged in his first year as being the defensive coordinator, and people wanted him fired. You know, for example, uh, a certain particular gentleman probably in this panel wanted him fired. But um, <laughs> I did. <clears throat> <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know he definitely has rebounded and you know owned the defense and now you know this defense has his imprint on it for sure which you know by the way i did ask uh teron davenport about the defense who was running the defense the first year the second year and the third year and guess who was running the defense the entire time that would be mr shane bowen so actually it was him running the defense the first year then they got better and got better and got more familiar with what he wanted so it just took a little time, you know. Took a little time. <laughs> and a lot, and a lot of a lot of uh, replacements. They made a whole <laughs> overhaul that last offseason to their defense. That's true. Mm-hmm. Then no I'll doubt. give you this though. I give you this though. Also, Bud Dupree also has uh, talked about him feeling healthy. He said he didn't feel healthy until his last game of last year. 
Oh, the last regular season game. Mm -hmm. So wow. imagine a whole season of Bud Dupree healthy. And Bud Dupree was running around on basically just one leg out there. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it gets even tougher for, for people to pace that defense now. <laughs> Usually you feel your worst is the last game of the season. He was feeling his best. That is really strange. That's ironic. But you know what? Okay. Hey, if, let, him, let him feel like that all year long, the way he felt in his last game. I feel great right now. Look, I could have gone for another two hours with you guys. This was awesome. But I know we all got to bust a move and we're going to do what we got to do. We're going to save our predictions because we all got our shows that are coming out. So we're not going to spoil it now with our records and our predictions. But I think you guys kind of got the idea who's going to fight for first place over here. We got Tennessee. We got Indianapolis. We'll find out. We'll make our picks. Before we go, Parrish, tell them what you got going on lately, where they can find you, all that good stuff. Man, man, I uh, appreciate you having me on the show again, Jason, man. Uh, always fun talking with talking with the guys. Had Mike and Chris on my show twice last year on my old Let's Talking Up podcast. So, man, appreciate it. Um, Y'all can follow me on Twitter at the one, at the one underscore P Shark. Uh, go to my bio. I got a link tree in there, and you can go follow everything I do from there. You can follow Let's Be Real podcast on YouTube or any podcast platform. We go live on Saturdays. It's upcoming Saturday. We got a, a returning guest. Who trolled us about Danny Dimes a couple years ago coming back to uh, right right his wrongs <laughs> on this episode? <laughs> uh, the LC East um, preview and also yeah, um, uh, NBA is going on uh, about to come back up. I have the Memphis Grizzlies podcast, the starting five, starting starting five podcast with Grizzly Bear Blues Podcast Network. So follow me, uh, follow us on any podcast platform, Grizzly Bear Blues Podcast Network. If you're a Grizzlies fan or want uh, NBA fan period and want to know about the, more about the Memphis Grizzlies. Love it, man. Well done. Well done. You are a must follow. And another thing I love about you, especially on, on Twitter, is that you're always supporting your people, man. You're always supporting us. I'm always getting a shout out from you, whether it's on the show or what. And you do a great job, man. So you're an awesome follow. I appreciate you coming on the show so much. You have no idea. It's been great. This will be the first of many, many, many this year. No question. Mike, you're touring the whole damn NFL, but you're touring the AFC South a whole lot more than that. So tell us what's good, man. Who's coming on next? Who do you got? You got Warren Moon coming on next. I want Ryan Tannehill. I mean, you're getting all these guests. Who do you got? <laughs> well, I do have uh, – I definitely do have Mr. Warren Moon coming on this week. But before all Warren right. Moon, I do have a little fantasy football talk with uh, the Athletics' Brandon Howard. So he'll be on this week as well. So if you, you need your fantasy football tips, he's got you covered. So that, that'll be the show for this week. Of course, uh, if you're watching, you can see my handle right below me. It's at Mike Patton 82. It's M I K E P A W T O. Oh, yeah. 82 on Twitter. And uh, of course, you know, I don't have the fancy lead tree, but I am everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. You're everywhere. And I, I remember when I was calling you the general 12 years ago. So you're still in command to me, my friend. All right. <laughs> see you. My brother from the other side of the freaking country, man. But we still got love all day, all the way. We're still Colts fans, man. I'm with you on the AFC side. So what's, <laughs> what can we expect? Yeah, so uh, y'all can follow me on Twitter at DropBallsPod. Um, I have a link tree in my bio as well. So it gives you the link to my podcast, to yeah, some of the stuff I've done on YouTube that. as well. Um, haven't put out anything i think in about like the past two weeks but i've just been busy i've been like traveling and stuff i'm leaving tomorrow to go to phoenix for work and like all this other stuff so um so but i'm definitely football season's around the corner we definitely going we definitely getting some stuff out there um like jason said earlier i do boxing football basketball when it comes back um and I mean, boxing, we got a couple fights coming up. We got Earl Spence and Bud. We got Zerto uh, fighting Baval. So, like, we have some really good stuff that's coming up. Shakir is fighting here soon as well. So, definitely going to be talking about that on the podcast. But yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Dropballs Pod. I'm usually in Twitter spaces all day, pretty much every day. Um, and I troll on Twitter and I, <laughs> I can talk real sports, but I also, but I also troll on Twitter. So, I mean, just be prepared. Just be prepared. We have, we have fun though. I just like, to, I like to have fun, man. I like to laugh, like to, you know, be controversial nah. sometimes. That's what my mom, that's what my mom tells me. So <laughs> my mom knows right. There's no doubt about that. Now I love when you put yep. out your yep. star cut bench, 
you know, I love that. I'm, I'm all over that. You do a great thing. You get people all riled up, bro. So <laughs> I love it. I love it. You do yeah, I, I've noticed I've noticed some people have been stealing my stuff lately, too. But, you know, that's <laughs> cool. I, I'll address that on the timeline. <laughs> Jeez, I love it. I love it. Oh, man, I can't thank the panel enough for coming on again. My name is Peter, and I will be back live Wednesday on the third and three podcast with my co host Damian and Nikki. And then we're going to make our predictions and just get all crazy, freaky fantasy football draft. We have a whole lot to get to. I don't have time to go over it now. It's already getting late. It's past my bedtime. But this is the Power 32 podcast bringing you the power every week, all 32 teams on the docket. We'll see you guys next time, whatever next time is going to be. Peace out. As the thing goes. <laughs> I should love when that happens. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the screen just went back. <laughs> 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 I don't want to. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs>